is one, so. We want to cut to it there. Very intense bowler is Lee Schreiner, very talented. But Certainly he is. doesn't lack focus. No, he's got one of the best uh, mental focus in the game for sure. Seems to be getting better with age. He's been around quite a while and still winning at the highest level. He's played for a few different states as well. I think he's played for at least three. And he's played for Victoria and Tasmania. So, wow. plenty of experience. Yes, shared it. Shared his talent around. Yeah, as well as playing for Australia. So, Ash, if we get Andrew Howie, if we can draw him away, he's flat out running the event, which he does in it does beautifully but um, huge workload but if we can find a couple of minutes of spare time we'll slip him through through the commentary and he played in a few states as well. Yeah I think yeah Andrew's done three. three. Yeah played for three states and still only the second best bowler in the family. <laughs> yeah Kelsey's uh yeah she's certainly in a class of her own. Yeah so how that imagine their conversations. Um, no awesome. yeah. So puts the tape away Just the one to start proceedings. Okay, so New South Wales are winning all the first ends across the board. And straight away we go T to T. Yeah, then you're going well, within reason. It's quite a popular tactic over East uh, Doug. You see quite a lot of it, these guys. It really sorts people out, this ditch. You see it quite a lot. And chalk to start. Yeah, good handy start from Daniel. So I was having a chat with Ben during, in between proceedings in the first game and and um, he, he said he's going to have quite a... Have a few of his family will be sitting there watching him play. His brother Jason... Dad Lee, wife Kelly, they will be watching the live stream, so he, he sends his regards and hope they're barracking nice and hard for him. So you do you played against him as you were saying in underage? Uh, no, we, we, we were into the opens by then, but I think he might have been playing for Beresfield in Newcastle. Yeah, right. Now. At the time. Yep. And you're just going to cross again. Had a lovely wait. Daniel, young father of three himself, his wife Jody back at home, will be watching this game no doubt. Time difference makes uh, it a bit easier. Yeah, for them, well, three, yeah, three hours at the moment, so yeah, it'll be about four o'clock, I think. Quarter past four, yeah, there you go. Yeah, four, yeah, right. Wales. yeah. Uh, Ben looks like he's corrected with this one. Walks past, manager of the Northern Territory side. He'll come back and have a chat with us when he's ready. Good oh, bowler on his own right. Played in the over 60s. Manages the Open. Catherine's played in the over 60s. Wife, so talented family. Spent a lot of time West Australia boy as such, as we know him, and back to play at Osborne Park this summer. Oh, great shot from Peter Taylor there, trailing Jack for three straight over to Daniel's bowls. So a bit of pressure on the NT guys here early. Well, it might have been close to going on for second shot. Better chasing after this one. First one was a crack out. I don't think he's a mile away either with this one. So is that near enough to Jack High, or would you think he'll swap just, hands? Uh, just short of Jack High, I'd say. So he looks he, like he's going to change. Well, he can roll his over. He can. The key to this shot is to be two and through. Whether he's got the height, hard to tell from out. I think he's going to run away. It's, uh, it's drawing quite a bit, that hand. And he'll swoop underneath. Um, there's enough of that easterly still there to make that a little bit trickier. Carhilly now, walking down to the mat, plays first bolt. Oh, 
Oh, forehand draw. Okay, so, so Jason Smith, third for NT, just walking back to the mat. Home club Humpty Doo. Might be a few watching him, hopefully. So what's his shot? He'll still swing onto that backhand? I'd say he would do, yes. He'll just play through which their shot is probably third shot. Yeah, I'd say it'd be third. Okay, well, we're joined for some uh, special words from the manager from the Northern Territory side, Lee Farrell. Welcome, Lee. Yeah, good to be here and uh, great to be back in my own state. Yes, uh, yes, West WA Australia. boy, WA we've, boy. Uh, we've yeah. found out. Well, great shot coming through here. Wow. Oh, that was a river from Jason Smith. Lee, three down. Yeah. that's a welcome. That's a welcome for you to the to the screen, to the microphone, as, as your, one of your teammates that you're managing just slides that one through for shot. Yeah, no, um, the boys have uh, started off very well. They started a bit slow because we, we come off all synthetic greens up there, so there's no uh, grass. So it's taken the boys, you know, two or three um, goes on the grass to get their weight, get their, their line and everything else, and they're starting to pick it up. They they come home very, very strong against Tasmania, uh, especially on two rinks, and, and just about uh, beat those guys. So I was quite happy about that. They, they certainly play well, and uh, it takes a while coming off synthetic to, to pick up your line and your weight uh, coming on the grass. Certainly does. Uh, tell us how the selection process works over there, Lee. Obviously, the, um, there's not a lot of clubs in Northern Territory, but uh, yeah, how, how does it work that these guys get here today? Um, yeah, we um, we have a what they call beat the coach. Um, so we set up a, a training regime where um, they come in on a on a Saturday and a Sunday, and they're, they're invited to. We invite about oh, 20 to 30 players. 30 players have been invited this year to come in and try out. So they, they have to go through a, a test, which I call beat the coach. And they go through these tests um, over over the, the Saturday, and uh, and once once they do that, um, we then limit the uh, the top uh, 20 players down, and uh, they go through uh, the test again, and and then from there we then build a side of, of 16, and then we go there from from trials and everything else, and the test is probably quite unique because uh, yeah it's it's designed to to uh, make sure. That they can they can meet all the requirements for getting behind the jack and and drawing as well. So yeah. so Lee, your season over there, as we see Lee Schreiner holding holding one, and what will he do? Roll his front one over. Well, he's got a little bit of weight on it, so he's trying to change something. Ooh, for shot. the jack of the bowl. We'll just wait for Tristan to put this one down before you give us a bit of a run through on the seasons up there, Lee. Yep. It is a bit different to our climate and our seasons down here. Just in playing the forehand, just looking to draw another shot. See if he holds. So oh, Shrein will be looking to run for the bowl here. Bowl or Jack as a bonus. Like all great bowlers, he's really balanced off the mat. Immense focus, this, this man. And he's looking at it closely. Jack, he's got the Jack clean. Straight through to the ditch there. Make it a very difficult task for Tristan to try and draw this. They're, they're actually the ditches are reasonably deep as well. The, um, yeah, so if it's sitting right at the back, it's not going to make it any easier. If he sits right on the ditch, he'd have to be half the bowl hanging over. Tell you what, it's a cracking effort though. <laughs> it's a very good effort. Half a roll. So, well, if, well, they're setting up for this next end, so the season's up there, Lee. Yeah, we're reverse to um, you guys down here because uh, uh, we play in our in our dry season, which is uh, your winter down here. So uh, we kick off in, in April and we, we sort of 
uh, designated two weekends for two state events. So we, we play two state events in April uh, and then other two state events in May. So we get those state events out in April and May. Uh, and of course the clubs play their own events as well during that period. Uh, we then kick into June and firstly concentrate on the over 60 state events. So we have the uh, over 60s there and, and they play all their, their championships events in, in June. Uh, we then move into July and for those people that probably have been up to um, Darwin and, and Nightcliff to play in the carnivals. So we, um, yeah, we have um, three weeks of carnivals up there. So I certainly invite anyone that hasn't come up to come and play in those carnivals. Uh, we have, you know, the Nightcliff's $30,000 worth of prize money and, and Darwin's got 10000 So we give away about $40,000. Yeah, I've been, uh, it's on money. my to-do list to get up for that, for that Darwin carnival. I've never been to Darwin, so... <laughs> The people there's a lot of people that we play against um, in the over 60s in the state that have been up there. You know, Josh Barry, who just recently won there, um, played up there. He won uh, run up in the singles and everything else up there. So he had a, a very, very good season up there in the carnival as well. So we then, so we then jump into um, August and uh, we have our pennants. Our pennant season goes for six weeks. Um, we have um, Div 1, uh, which is only four sides in Div 1, and then we have uh, six sides in Div 2. So we're all over in Div 1 play two rounds and then top two play finals. Div 2 play, um, uh, they've got six sides, so they play um, one round and then they have finals. The top four play up in the finals. So that finishes um, virtually August. September then we go back into um, club events and uh, we concentrate very heavily in that time into state training. So we do a lot of work in state training in September. And of course October, we're sitting down here in October. So that's really the season. By the time you get out of October, you're into the wet season down there, up there, and it becomes, yeah, if people know up there, it starts to start to rain up there now, and very humid and very hot up there. So uh, yeah, it, it's not that comfy. You've got to play virtually in the evening. So to, get there as well. so to summertime, Lee, what, what happens to the bowling clubs at the summertime? Do well, they play social bowls, you know. Okay. We're lucky at Darwin. Um, got, we, they spent $1.5 million up there getting an over cover uh, facility up there in Darwin and, and they'll play probably in the in the afternoon so you'll start four or five o'clock but you certainly have to worry about four o'clock because that's when the, the tropical rain starts right. to hit as well and, and I've played there when the bowls virtually are, you know you hear it coming <laughs> and you run for cover and by the time you come back the bowls are virtually underwater okay. but half an hour later <laughs> it drains away and yeah, we're back right. playing bowls again so yeah <laughs> but it's very very hot and humid up here that time of year so it's not very comfortable. So New South Wales just holding the one shot there, Lee. Yeah, it looks like it. And we see the... Yeah, the Daniel second. Hill lead bowl there. Yes. So Ian Smith's first bowl's foot behind the second one a bit wide and covering Ooh. the back. Yeah, never wasted back there. No. So, Lee, the, um, any juniors program within the NT? No, unfortunately not. That's, it's not very, very, you know, we've, we've brought two young blows uh, down this year, um, and Adam Hollingworth and Stanley Cox, and um, well, we have got a, a two or three more young fellas up there which we'd like to bring, bring down. We, these two guys, um, I felt they were worthy of bringing down to uh, expose them to you know, high-class bowling and, and the standard there to know exactly where they are because they're the future. These two guys that are playing in Scotty Chamberlain's rink on the third rink will be uh, our future skippers that will come through. And, yeah. So New South Wales after that one from Carl Healy, magnificent, graze the jack, holding two. And I think that's the standard of these guys. They're just so good. They just back themselves to draw off bowls that are... You know, your, your average bowler would probably try and run away and things like that. So, yeah, the standards, I believe. It wouldn't surprise me if Carl had drew his own bowl here. Very, very impressive resume. He's one of the best in the country. Penrith boy originally. They're playing out at Capamata. I think he still might be the greenkeeper at Penrith. Just going to reach through. Left him with two up. Good position. And 
It's good effort from Jason Great just effort. running through. Flips. Flipping the car heli bail over, unfortunately, but that might make it a bit easier for Tristan. And Lee, a father son combination within the Northern Territory lineup? Yeah, we've got uh, Scott Hollingworth and uh, Adam Hollingworth. Um, certainly, Scott hasn't been uh, back on the scene for about 10 years, so uh, I spoke to him as coach and everything else and said, Look, how would you like to come back and, and have a go um, back with your son? And we'll bring Stanley with you and, and also. Um, Young Wayne is a, um, out there as well. So the, he's got three young up and coming players with him. And of course, Scotty was a, uh, he's played over 250 games for NT and over the years. But uh, um, yeah, very, very accomplished player. And, and he, I remember him playing uh, a couple of years ago, he was playing in the Champion Champions against um, um, the Tasmanian guy. Um, yeah, so. So, do you ever get a chance for do other states visiting and uh, playing any extra tests, or they only get only test match out through the side series? Yeah, only that's what we get because because of the distance involved and the cost involved, it's very very hard to get people to come up there and play and everything else. So it is very very difficult and very costly. I've tried to get them to go and play in Hong Kong and Singapore and places like that. So just to make something different, but we just don't, we're not exposed to good players in this. Yeah, it does make it. It does make it. It's sort of the same yeah. with the WA team there. Just so far away from everyone else, it makes it pretty it is, pretty it? tricky. Yeah, it is very tricky. It's it's quite unique, you know that. Like this year, um, Alice Springs, we brought four players in from Alice Springs down there who were, so they came up and played in the state championship, so they got recognised up there. Alex uh, Brennan's playing in the, in the third rink up there, and so they brought there, but uh, they renovated their green and they only got one green. So um, Alex Brennan, who's the, um, the greenkeeper, uh, the president of the Alice Springs bowl, um, Golf Club, decided that he'll get the greenkeeper to just mow down the 15th. Uh, green, <laughs> and that's what they practiced on yeah, wow. to get up here. So wow. it's quite unique that yeah, it's, it's amazing, the first there. And yeah, and they've done pretty well there. Like um, one of the guys that played in the over 60s, Mick Hewitt, actually won our most valuable player, and, and that was his sort of practice coming up here to, to do that as well. Oh, so so a little power on the middle here, Lee. So yeah, um, they've been instructed to do that. You know, if they're, they're getting there as well, they'll be talking about. Um, whether they're going to hit it or what, or you know, or what lengths they're going to play as well. I've always asked them to stop at least seven or, or 14 ends, you know, and getting in a red time, just to make sure that the whole game gets slowed down. You don't want to train on these guys just to, to roll along. You want to slow that game down and, uh, and make them think. And, and so maybe they're just talking about their best fishing spots. <laughs> they're going to slow they could the game. Be, they could be too, mate, yeah. Well, I say like Tristan's going to run at this. Yeah, he's yeah, not much going to run, but it looks like, yeah. looks like there'll be some smoke on this one. Yeah. Get a bit of power from this thing, so yeah, he's going big at it. Oh. Not too keen. Oh, oh no, oh. look at this, it's got a double and bounce. Oh, yeah, Creative, oh, and oh, shot. maybe one down. Happened? Happened? Maybe one down. Two down. Well, oh, he's made two out of it. Yeah, made two. Very lucky. Yeah. Where are we? Good the result. Result. Yeah. Well, double bounce. <laughs> double bounce and stays in on the other side. So that's what they were talking about, Lee. As yeah, I don't know if they were, talk if they were talking about that. They're geniuses. No, yeah, so I think they're going to either put it in the well or try and kill it. That was the, uh, the discussion period. But uh, it's good that Tristan, very, very experienced bowler, brings these guys into the game and, and they discuss it. And I said, it's not about, about yourself. You know, Get in there and discuss with your team. And, and, and you, then the decision's made. You make all your whole four of you made that decision. If it goes bad, yeah, it's not... The skipper plays his own game, so it's good to see that. They'll shorten this up now. They'll, they'll go short on these yeah, guys. Yeah, no, they certainly have. They've, I, yeah, don't know no. if that, that, I don't think the check's gone long enough, far enough, actually. Well, they're back on the tee, so it could be close. So they it'll be marked, so they'll... Another power out. Yeah. Calling the umpire, so that'll be the final decision will be made by the umpire and the... Ta oh, oh. Yes. And we had a discussion about this earlier that uh, yeah, we'll go short on them, short on New South Wales. Uh, they like to drive, but also Tristan will back himself to draw the shot back. If he goes in the well, put it on the tee, goes in the well, you're virtually you know, down to a metre or less than a metre to draw a shot. Here, if it goes wide, you get two metres or three metres to draw a shot. So it's just part of our game plan that against New South Wales, um, they'll play long all day on us, so we're going to break it up with short ends. Not short by... Uh that much. A couple of inches. Oh, bad luck. 
So I dare say I know what will be coming up here then. Along. <laughs> yes, it will be the complete opposite of <laughs> that, I believe. The upside is they won't have to shift the mat. No. And we thank Sue Hogg, one of our ITOs yes, here. Yes, one of our finest. In Australia, not just WA. Not just WA. So they'll Lee, you would suspect there'll be a few back home watching this in the clubs or yeah they will certainly be uh, homing in on on this uh, coverage uh, um, I don't know how many are tuning in or not but they'll be certainly homing in once the, the word get round we we've actually uh, put it on Facebook to to let people know that it's going to be on yep and to watch that so uh, I'm certainly hoping that they are tuning in and, and having a look at the at Tristram and the boys in action I know Ben trainer pointed out to me your lead that uh, he'll have family watching and to make sure just remind him if I could to to feed the dog and let the croc out for a swim and <laughs> <laughs> okay so in the girls the girls uh, actually uh, in front over there at the moment Northern Territory 9-7 in the early stages they had a great game uh, the first game when they um, got over um, uh, Tassie. Tassie by one shot yeah Tassie yeah so uh, Yep. Yeah, we did see a few uh, interesting results on the girls this morning. We said the ACT girls as well, uh, defeating Queensland. So Nostradamus might be your new name, Lord <laughs> Such, yes. with that guessing that they would go ditch to ditch, <laughs> which they have. Yes. Yeah, they yeah, will continue I know. to do so. They did it against WA this morning. It's a pretty common. It's something that, uh, yeah, I, I don't think the WA guys do quite enough of it, go ditch to ditch. And it's so predictable, isn't it? Yep. Uh, the WA guys 9-1 up in front of Tasmania. Can't quite see the girls. The girls, uh, Tassie girls are up 10-3. Yeah. A little bit tricky for us to see uh, ACT against Victoria at the moment. So Lee, for you, 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 you said to me earlier that you'll be staying down for the Perth summer. Yeah, I'm um, uh, coming back. Uh, we we arrive home back on the 17th, and uh, so we'll we'll get our caravan out and uh, grab our our pet dog, and uh, yeah, we're certainly uh, heading back down here to WA. Um, we haven't been back for a, a couple of years. I'll be sort of uh, over in South Australia, over there in Victoria. So this year I'm coming back to WA, and yeah, going to uh, yeah join up with the Saints again uh, and uh, play pennant season with them and the, and the wife. We'll certainly be down here as well, playing for the, the Saints as well. So uh, we look forward to that. Good mob of blokes, good club to play with. Uh, I know <laughs> Mr Kelly play with them as well, so we, it's been a, yeah, a great club there as well. We won a pennant together, didn't we? Yep, Lee. we certainly did. Yep. Um, right, yeah, so we see Ian Smith at resting toucher. Yes. The second, and he's just and to show how versatile yeah, he is. So he's had a crack on the <laughs> other hand, well. just to show off. Yes, just to show off. So he knows the weight. We'll just see whether he knows the grass on that other hand. One of them days when I could do stuff like that. Fair effort. Well, it's pulled up a bit short. Um, plays a lot with Tristan. He's won eight of his 11 state titles. Ian has played with Tristan Smallercombe. So, the good relationship between those two. Very good relationship. And when we're picking the uh, state side, I asked Tristan who he wanted for uh, for his second. He said, I'll have Smithy any time you like. Because yeah, right he on. knows how to play the game. He'll get the, the bowls on the jack all behind. And, yeah, they just know each other's game. And, yeah, he first first person he'll pick is, is Smithy. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, so. that's good to have. When you've got trust and belief in a player, it's an easy selection, isn't it? Yeah, and they've sort of done a lot in BBLs. And uh, they've, you know, finished very high in those results. And, and the one, you know, I said nine sides, nine titles between them and yeah, it's been very, very good, a very good combination as well, so and if you've got a good two, and I always believe that if you've got a good two, it, it makes a good side as well, because he can play the shots, he can play the running shots, he's a very good draw bowler, you know, he's won a couple of state um, singles titles up there, so he does go very, very well in, in all aspects of the game. So NT's third, Jason Smith holding one on a look, or do you think that, like, without seeing, looking at screen, it's Well, yeah, Peter had a run there and got his own bowl out, so probably is two now. Mm. One thing I noticed, you see on the back of the caps uh, for the New South Wales team, they've got their numbers on it. And I think I just spotted that Lee Schreiner's number was 943, so yeah. best part of a thousand people have done the New South Wales colours. Shows the range of players that they've got to choose from. 
Carl coming back to the mat now. I don't think he'll be running. I think he'll be trying to draw this off. Yeah, Daniel Hill, 9.46. Pete Taylor, 9.45. It's unbelievable, isn't it? What's Sheriff's number? Uh, pay, yeah, well, Sheriff, Sheriff probably would have... He'd, he'd be quite a... Well, not... Because he would have started about 20 years ago playing yeah. for New South Wales, so he'd probably be... Four or five hundred. Yeah, probably, probably yeah. something like that. Yeah. So Jason Smith back on the mat, see what he can do. Start his bowls at the MCG Bowling Club in yeah. Victoria, which interestingly do, well, doesn't exist anymore, but that was the uh, where the practice wickets are was where it actually was before that was removed. So he's going to lose that one. So Carl wasn't a mile away with his first. Very good line. He needs a minor correction. Talented Carlos Healy, backhand, got the height. I don't know if it's quite going to hang on. Weight was excellent again. And, and that's the thing that I noticed this morning watching him is, you know, grass is one thing, but their weight control is magnificent. They just that to and through a little bit as they need to. They do, uh, they, well, they call it state weight, what they call it over there. It's that art of the nice two foot two foot of weight and they, they do they, they play better than our, better than anyone else really it's 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 a bit tricky for us to play that kind of weight over here with the wind that we get it's so uh, we're probably a lot more drive draw uh, which makes it a bit difficult when we go over east and play these guys because yeah they're two foot two foot to a yard games just just incredible then they trail it and then in all sorts of trouble yeah yeah they do it well it was good to watch and Tristan former Australian singles champion Forehand, I'll try to add another counter. Beautiful delivery. A very good effort too, it's probably only about a roll out of counting. They've got plenty in the head there, NT. Yes. A lot of options here for, for Schreiner. No, I think he'll just try and draw this off. Yeah. If he touches a jack, he'll probably make two, so. Might be a bit tight as well, Lee. I don't know if that's quite wide enough. He hasn't quite got the weight either. So it's good to see that he's human. Uh, so the coach of the New South Wales side, do they have one? Um, do they need don't one? don't know if they do. It'd be hard to find someone that's better yeah, than the Yeah, how, <laughs> how do you coach that side? <laughs> I don't think they need a coach. No. These guys are no. very, very good. They they know the situation. They read the game so well. Yeah. yeah. And this yeah, is do. close. Roll short, but still a fair effort. Just their local pennant comp too. Doug is. I mean, they're they're playing they're playing this standard pretty much every week because just a local pennant comp. St John's Park, Cabramatta, and all those clubs are all in the same area, so they they're playing each other quite frequently. So he's had one look out this side, so we'll see whether he, how he corrects. Well, it's better grass. We're just going to have a little bit of run. Slip round the back. Just the one. So just the one to NT. Ta take the lead. Yeah, take the lead. Go up 3-2. So the New South Wales girls have uh, just hit the front. They're 14-11. Uh, so New South Wales leading 16-6 on the ag board. So, Lee, um, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks, thanks for your valuable time and, yeah, and your get back to what you're here for is managing the side, mate. <laughs> coaching the side, mate. Yeah, so yeah coaching yeah. the side. Yeah, yeah. managing. So yeah, it's been a pleasure and uh, yeah, thanks for yeah sending this this, inform this game back into the NT. I know the people up there will certainly enjoy watching it yeah. for the rest of the afternoon. And, um, yeah, it'd be pretty hot up there. I think it's rain about 10 mil, so they're probably sitting under their air conditioning, enjoying this coverage rather <laughs> than working outside. So, so. yep. Thanks no, for saying no, no, like, pleasure. Thanks, thanks, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Lee Farrell there, the manager and coach of the Northern Territory. It's been great to get some of his insides. It'll be 
Uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't know so much about the game in Northern Territory, so great to have him on. Just Absolutely. Get a bit of, bit of an insight. Yeah, a great learning curve. I mean, I, I know I have a different role within within bowls in in Australia, I guess, as president of of WA. So we get to mix with all the other presidents and CEOs, and so we get a bit of an insight from that. But to get Lee, who's right at the coalface as well, as more on the playing side of things, it was really informative and different challenges to the other states and and for them to be here and doing what they're doing and strutting their stuff and, and for us to have the privilege of live streaming it back into the NT uh, is gr it's just oh, great for the so. game and great for them. They'll be enjoying it, I'm sure. No, I'd love to get up there for their carnival. It's been on the, the bucket list. And they can bowl. No, they certainly can. So they back to their length. We're yeah, going to see this yeah. yin and yang of length yeah, during the have. afternoon. Hopefully we see it at 50-50, but we'll see how this unfolds. Yeah, touch of class here. Great correction here from Daniel Hill. The, the length won't worry them so much. No. I'm sure they do all, but that'll, they have their go-to and their game plan. So the lead-up to this, Doug, there would have been a fair bit of work involved uh, to get this uh, event running. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a Bowls Australia event, so so um, we'll sort of make that clear right from the start. And Andrew Howie will will wander past at some stage and I'll wrestle him to the ground and put some headsets on him <laughs> and we'll get a bit more of an insight. So I'd have asked him to come along and, and give us an, a, a bit of bit of insight exactly as to how he pieces together. And this this not a one trick pony. No, he does all the not. big ones. So uh, that'll be um, that'll be interesting when he when we get him. I know he's a busy man. But yes there is. Um, we obviously have our input and um, so forth and keep an eye on it all as it's as it's being prepared and but it's all on the back of is on the back of some really lucrative and generous sponsorship from Tourism WA and, and all the other partners, City of Joondalup, where all three host clubs come within the City of Joondalup. So them stumping up the money because it's a thirsty, thirsty uh, tournament to run. As you imagine flying all these players in from everywhere around Australia and, and all the costs that go with it. But, but it's also, and it's great for us to see it from see oh, these 100%. guys from home so 100%. it's really good and we just would you know and then four or five meters away from us you know we're seeing these guys you know the carl healy's and trainers and tristan smaller combs and the smith boys and benny trainer just strutting this stuff right here and we wouldn't see it like we don't see nope. those things we only see it on a screen nope, so certainly right don't get exposed to it that's absolute privilege and you turn around and look the other way and you see christina christic behind us and um yes yeah, just we're just awash with talent so uh, yeah, so privilege for us to be hosting it. And we have it again in 26, such you might be hitting your straps again, mate. Yeah, well, I think I'm, well, I'm probably due to <laughs> knuckle down. Of, uh, obviously, I've only just purchased the property uh, as of recent times, so I was going to take a bit of a back step, but it's, uh, it's one thing I haven't managed to achieve yet, which we'd, we haven't completely given up yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. Well, win the triples... Yeah, the National Top Triples would be nice. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that'd be a good start. Yeah, I'll get Dave Stocky around later on and yeah, we can we'll have a little chat about selection. Yeah, I'll see if I can get any strains while I'm here. Yeah, you might as well. Try and jump two spots. Yeah. <laughs> Cut out the middle man. So, we'll Lee Farrell will be a tough act to follow, but we're privileged as he puts on the headsets, to have the one and only Andrew Howie welcome aboard. You obviously, everyone knows Suchi, the most recognisable person in Australian bowls, they tell me. Uh, so welcome back, Howie. And so, small break from all the other duties that you've had during the lead-up and during this event. Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, good to yeah, get out here this afternoon, watch a bit of bowls and uh, talk with you fellas. Um, but yeah, no, Suchi and I go way back. I we think do. we... Uh, I first met Sachi as a 10-year-old playing the New South Wales Junior Pairs with yeah. my brother. Yeah, we do. We go back quite far, actually. <laughs> that that is a long time ago. <laughs> young, young, skinny, good-looking bloke yeah. with hair, long hair down, down to his back. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the yeah. Adonis days. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, um, yeah, what a spectacular afternoon for bowls. It's, uh, oh. The weather's uh, really been kind to us today. Nice and warm, not much wind, and um, yeah, I'm sure this will be a great spectacle this afternoon. So how much work does go into this, Andrew? Obviously, this doesn't happen overnight. This will be something that's obviously planned weeks and months, probably well before the event. Yeah, it's um, like anything you do, mate, uh, work-wise or, yeah, um, but especially events, you you do have to be prepared. A lot of the work has to be done before you get there. So um, I think um, oh, it was probably nearly 12 months ago we locked in the host venues. Um, we knew we were coming to WA, so we worked closely with Bowls WA. 
um, and obviously uh, at the area that um, our event partners wanted us to come to, which was the sort of the Joondalup area we landed in, um, or the city of Joondalup, sorry. And then I think I came over in about April or May, met with all the host clubs, um, checked out their facilities, and then from there all the planning sort of took place. It was... It's actually a very tricky event to get ready this year because we, um, for those that know, we had the World Bowls Championships uh, in August and September, uh, right on when we should have been planning for this event. We we're trying to run uh, the world's yeah. biggest event, so it's yes. um, it's been a challenging year, but it's uh, yeah, so far so good. It's all it's all come off well. Um, the three host venues we, we've chosen for this event, I, I don't think we could have picked better clubs. Um, Sorrento, as we're here today, they've done a fantastic job. Um, Warwick Bowling Club held the um, Para Nationals and all the players are raving about how well they did. Oh, uh, they've said they've set the bar high, very high excellent. for the next venue. Uh, and then, of course, we've had Joondalup who just staged the Senior Sides Championships um, and then we'll be staging the Australian Championships as well later next week. So, yeah, it's been fantastic, mate. And still a bit to go. We've got the uh, National uh, Championships next week, so uh, down in Joondalup for four days. Yeah, so yeah, as I said, yeah, June Love, I think that all kicks off on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so, of course, the Australian sides go through to Monday, uh, one game on Monday, finish lunchtime, um, put the feet up for a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, get into our last uh, event at Joondalup. So that's um, sure to be exciting as well. Anyone we should be watching when they get to Joondalup? <laughs> well, the first day it's all happening, uh, I'll make a brief appearance. <laughs> yeah, right, OK. Uh, hopefully okay. four games would be nice. Bring the crowds back, you reckon? Oh, um, oh they'll be flooding <laughs> in, flooding <laughs> in for some such. Uh, it'd be good to see you chuck a few down, mate. Yeah, good, good luck well, with that. that. That's what it is nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. So what's his shot here? Even I've got a view of it and holding the one. Yeah, well, Shrena had a bit of a bash then, so uh, clipped out the short bolt. So it'd be hard to get another one, or they had to... To measure as it is, so whether he, how he's going to cover that. Yeah, he's, he's not far away. He's played pretty good speed. Just depends how far it gets back. It's and where will if they hit, if they hit that Howie, where, where will that Jack spit? It's every chance by the look of it. Lee was trying to play through the pink bowl through the Jack, bounce the Jack out to those yellow ones, or even kill it. Um, so Tristan's bowl there, although it's um, just a little bit shy, uh, it's probably landed in a good home. So. It'll make Lee think about what weight he has to play here. Um, just a bit hard, Doug, being the first down. I'm trying to work out who's coloured bowls. Oh, yeah, right. So yeah. To, to, <laughs> what, he, to what he's going to try and play. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that... But, um, <laughs> well, it looks like we... Yeah, as, as Carl's calling here, you could go big for that split there and, and get rid of a few. So, front shot, the front bowl is shot. The second, which yeah. is NT. The back one is second shot. So, then the rest are obviously all important, but... I'd yeah. be thinking it'll come this way. Yeah, I would expect if he goes quick, it, it's a little bit dangerous there. He could actually remove his shot, his second shot bowl. So I think by the look of what Carl said there, it's a, it's a yard or two of weight. Try and push the shot bowl through the jack out to those yellow ones. We'll see, but... Yeah, so he's going forehand, so I think it's going to be relatively large again. It is. Oh, he's going big. He's going to cut the front one again. Well, we see the depth in this... New South Wales side, Andrew, like a place like Carl Healy, he's just gone back to back world championships and, and he's playing three, so it just shows how good yeah. this New South Wales side is. They're, they're, they're def definitely the team to beat. Mate, for sure, on paper, they've they've always had some great teams, and I suppose you look at across their 12 today on the park, every one of them could be skipping any state team, so it's. Um, yeah, they've got so many great players, but it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to get the combinations right and, and uh, get those three rings uh, right. So um, they had a big win this morning. So um, not that I should be mentioning that too much, uh, sitting no. next to two uh, Western <laughs> Australian blokes now. But um. <laughs> So, Andrew, you've come this, you've run, this is the, the three of big events you've had this year. You go, well, more. So that we had the, um, you go the AO, you have uh, World Champs, um, uh, Com... Yeah, we had so we had the yeah, so, games were, oh, yeah AO nice. um, Australian indoors uh, world yeah, champs into yeah. this. Uh, then we've got uh, second week of um, November. We've got the Bowls Premier League 18 at Club Pine Rivers. Um, so that's the last event for the year, and then we'll be busy um, trying to get everything ready for the 2024 Australian Open. So um, we'll launch entries for the Australian Open again in early December. Um, and then then we uh, sort of move into February with another BPL, and then it's all systems go getting everything ready for the for the AO. So, um, What's uh, the hardest event to run? Yep. So AO versus this event? Oh, AO by far. It's yeah. um, 
it, it's it's a beast of its own. It, it really is a a lot of organisation. It literally, I think for an AO, I normally start. Um, I'd start in November, uh, getting in contact with the clubs, um, launching all our entries, our prize money, everything like that, launching the website. And then we're literally working with stuff right up until the event. Because we're because you're dealing with so many people, um, the draws one thing. Just to try and get the draw out and fit all the teams in it is quite challenging. Um, but then you're dealing with the, so many changes to teams, pullouts, or and then you and we we sort of pride ourselves with the AO of of trying to make sure everyone doesn't have a buy or a forfeit in their section. Like everyone's guaranteed that three games. So we really work hard if we've got late pullouts to try and get people to fill those spots. But um, it, it is a it's a it's a very challenging event, but it's rewarding at the same time. It's um, just just amazing to see how many people really enjoy the event and just talk about yeah, it. It's worldwide, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and they Coming go back and tell their club mates, and next year you spot them, and there's 20 of them this time rather than 10. So it, it, it shows yeah. we're doing something right, um, which Numbers? is great to see. Numbers last year, and they expected no, any growth left in it. Yeah, so we, um, I'll just you put me on the spot here. I've got to try and think about that now. Three, um, three thousand, and it was yeah over three thousand entries, thirty three hundred, I think nearly. Uh, worked out to be about five and a half thousand people on the coast. Uh, so by the time you take in um, the players, the family members, spectators that they might have brought with them, um, we yeah we were just about at peak on some of those days. Uh, wow. So we. After all this is over, we'll um, sit down and, and work out what we're going to do, plan of attack this year for the AO. Um, we were fortunate we um, we managed to draw one extra club in this year um, in Benley Bowls Club, who normally weren't involved in the, in the tournament. So, oh, that's good. Um, yeah, each year is sort of different, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting it to grow again. Um, and yeah, so we'll continue to take entries where we can and make sure we can get everyone a game. So, Is there a ceiling on it where you can't push past a certain number? Uh, well, under its current format, there would be, yeah, for sure. Um, but we've always got options of, of do you do you run um, an extra day or two of qualifying yeah, to right. um, to try and fit more people in? Do you play more night games? Um, so we've got we've got a few options up our sleeve. It makes it a bit tricky with the. It doesn't really allow for rain or. Uh, no, it makes it a no, bit, bit, bit no. difficult. You do have to have the weather god shining on yes. you uh, for the Australian Open, but. Um, but yeah, no, we, we work closely with our host clubs and uh, and work out what greens they're willing to offer us throughout those two weeks, and um, and they all do a fantastic job to ensure the AO, uh, yeah, runs smoothly each year. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge. It's I, I pull my hair out from time to time trying to organise that event, and yeah. So so world champs, which you've just come off the back of. So tell me, any interesting stories and challenges dealing with. Countries where it's not their bread and butter playing bowls like we're so accustomed to everything that goes yeah. with it. So, it's um, I, I really did enjoy the World Championships. There was a lot of work beforehand, but um, once once the event run, dealing with all the countries, and and we're dealing with countries who have got a lot of funding off their government, and they've got coaching staff and uh, high performance teams to look after them, and then you're dealing with countries where they might just have one manager and he's got to try and get the team around and find out what how to how to catch public transport and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was a challenge just with that communication breakdown um, and obviously that some of the countries get into the event and not knowing how to get to the venues or um, some didn't show up with bowls, so I had to try and help them get bowls for the event. So yeah, I saw it, the French team, the Fr who did very well, actually. They nearly knocked Australia off in, uh, yeah. I think it was the triples. But it was just great to see uh, the love of the game. Like they all loved, loved the world. Well, loved the world championships. Just enjoyed taking part. A lot of them knew they're not going to be able to compete with the likes of Australia, New Zealand, Scotland. But they just loved to, love to be involved in the event, and they embraced it. Yeah. So update on the end, Suchi. Yeah. Oh, Carl, he trying to draw on the floor. And looks like Daniel's got the shot. Uh, my workmates are actually on their lunch break, and they want a shout out at West Track. So I better say good day to all the team at uh, West Track, who should be at work. Instead of listening to me. Yeah, good spot there by Carl. Yeah, um, fair effort. Fair effort. So see, the uh, green's finishing nicely now, isn't it? It's um, yeah. If we can just hold off on this little wind a bit, we uh, yeah. we're one of the windiest cities in the world. We uh, and yourself, uh, Andrew, as a player, you've uh, had plenty of um, experience at bowls at this level. Uh, a couple of different states you played for in your time. So it might be quick for he names the states he didn't play for. So uh, well, I know I know he hasn't played for us. I'm pretty sure he hasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was lucky enough to. Um, yeah, I spent a fair bit of time, 15 or 16 years in Canberra. Um, 
as a young fella growing up and um, yeah managed to, to have a crack with the ACT team over those years and um, yeah it was great and then I sort of moved around for one reason or other found myself playing for New South Wales and then when I moved to Queensland I had a, I had a couple of goes playing with Queensland so some of those are just uh, just must have yeah fell my way mate like there's, there's as we all know with selection whether it's at club level or state level um, there's so many good players you've just got to be doing something right get noticed at the right time and um, but yeah I was very very grateful for my three stints um, at those different states and I guess running these events now, this is the one event I do really miss playing in. Um, it was my favourite by, by far. Oh, just that, pretty cool, isn't it? It's yeah, that team environment. Um, as you see, a great shot there by Carl trailing the jack. Looks like and one to New South Wales. So where do you play the most, as with the skippers will cross over, but where do you play the most games? Uh, yeah, so games off the top of my head I wouldn't know with Canberra, but it was definitely with the ACT. I think I had maybe... Oh, 10 or 11 Alley Shields uh, with, with ACT. I think from the moment I sort of turned 18, um, I was in the team. And then I had one Alley Shield with New South Wales and we were lucky enough to um, to claim the title that year. And then I had two Alley Shields with Queensland. So wow. uh, I'm not sure what that equates to in terms of games. but um, It's a few. More than most. This, yeah, it's quite funny. Like I, I turned around this morning and I was watching the ACT boys and a lot of those players I used to play with. So it's good to good to catch up with them and have a chat to them. And yeah, hopefully they go well this week. Hmm. And uh, Kelsey's still going pretty good, mate. She's still going great guns. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Her um, her bowls takes priority in our household these days. So oh, um, <laughs> I was going to say, well, how, how do you how do you guys juggle it all? I mean, obviously you've got a couple of young kids and. Makes uh, makes life tricky trying to work full time and juggle juggle that schedule. Yeah, you're right, Suchi. Like um, every event, virtually I'm running. Kelsey, a lot of times playing in. Yeah. So it is challenging. Um, we're very very lucky. We've got a good support network at home with my mum and dad. Um, so they look after the kids and they do a great job. So um, yeah, they're at home. Uh, well, they might be watching now. I'm not sure, but the kids are probably just finishing school. The grandparents oh, yes. are picking them up and um, yeah. So but no, they do a do a fantastic job and help us out uh, immensely. So the neighbouring two rinks, New South Wales, have jumped out of the blocks uh, quite a bit. So yeah. So yeah. thirteen seven on the aggregate in favour of New South Wales. Nineteen completed ends. Yeah, I think it. I think it might be a bit further out now. These rinks are one ten and ten two, so there's probably a few to go on that. Yeah, twenty two to twenty two to seven. By the look yeah. Of it. yeah. Anyway, I'll we'll see what Tristan's going to do here. Um, I suppose such he could stay on the back end if he liked and worked off the pack and trail the jack, isn't it? or does he? He was sort of looking down the forehand there for some weight. Maybe out of chip, Carl Healy's bowl out clean potentially. Well, he's going forehand again. He's trying something similar. Yeah, he didn't stay. Stuff off white, got to get back on him. Oh, it was his own bolt. Oh, one more roll, probably would have done it. Creative, still one down. Yeah. Trainer with the last bowl. No danger down there on the backhand for Lee. Either side, as you can see, Carl Healy there, either side of the, the cannon, he can draw the shot. Played with impeccable weight in the last one. Yeah, hasn't he been in good form, Lee? Oh, for those, those that don't know, claim Fine another, wine. The another other Australian gets. Champion of Champion singles title. Uh, fourth, I believe. So. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? There's probably mm. not much he hasn't won in the sport no. bowls. Um, Just the one? So to keep it a pretty, pretty tidy, pretty close in this ring. Yeah, just a bit of a shout out for those um, tuning in that want to see how all the other matches are going. We are live scoring um, every match uh, throughout this event. So they can be accessed through the Bowls Australia website, um, through the Nationals landing page. Um, yeah, so it's uh, plenty to look at. So Andrew, a team of how many of you have got helping you as we as you're piecing all this together? And just to make it harder, of course, it's held at three venues and, you know, Perth does stretch out a bit, so a bit away from Warwick. And up, you know, up to Joondal up. Yep. But um, yeah, how, how's it all been, and keeping it all, piecing it together, and being so successful to this stage, anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, we're quite lucky. Like, the, although when you're running at different clubs, they're not far away, um, and they've all done a great job, as I said before. So, um, I've got an events and competitions coordinator who works in the event space with me, Paul Holschke. So, 
Uh, he was heading up the para nationals while I was here at Sorrento doing the juniors and the champion champs. Um, we've got some ITOs here that have, of course, helped with all the um, officiating throughout the event. Um, and local Sue Hogg has, has rallied the troops, uh, getting all the local umpires and markers to the event. She's done a fantastic job. So it's definitely a team effort. It's uh, You can't do it by yourself. So, um, yeah, it's all, all gone off smoothly. And um, at the end of the day, as long as the players are happy, the clubs are happy, it's that's the main thing. So this ditch again from the New South Wales boys. That's a handy start from Ben. They've both led well, so they certainly have. And especially with that, you know, at a degree of difficulty, where's they've been changing the lengths up, as we know. No, very tricky, very tricky to lead on at the best of times uh, with the WA wind. Never mind when it's ditch to ditch. Not a bad shot here if he clears the front. Yeah, well done. What's the key to playing in the wind over here, Suchi? Is it um, what sort of hand do you find a bit yeah, easier? Yeah, a couple, of, play side a couple of players have asked me that, and it is it is tough trying to play that in between stuff. Um, both both games we've actually seen the leads going alternative hands. Um, yep. The girls this morning both went. Um, personally, personally, I go the wide hand because you're generally going to come back. Um, the risk you take if you go the tight hand and the wind drops, and you'll you'll generally run right out of play. So. Uh, but you see a lot do go with the tight hand, they'll try and take the, the bias sort of out of it, but, but I, I find the wide hand's a little bit better because you'll generally come back to the head. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm Predictable. A, yeah. I, I generally, in my time when I was playing, I would prefer the wide hand, yeah. You, at least if you're a touch high, you're still getting back. Um, just, yeah, far off. So the front end for New South Wales, are these guys all skippers at home? Uh, yeah, so we've got, we've got Daniel Hill leading up. Um, so I believe he plays at Charlestown Bowling Club, and he is a skipper. Yeah, so he's um, he skipped for his club and, and his zone for a long time in zone two. Um, Peter Taylor, as we've got on the mat now, he's um, he plays, I think he plays out at our Austinville, I think it yeah, is, it's northern right up, New right South north, Wales. Isn't it? Um, but he also plays a lot at Tweed Heads Bowls Club, so... Um, so Club Tweed, I've played against him a fair bit in the Premier League in Queensland up there over the years, and he is a skipper, a really good player. Um, very aggressive player normally, yeah. So, um, But they're class players, they can play anywhere. Um, so they're definitely going to be hard to beat New South Wales. Yeah, no, I think they'd, I think they'd, all, be, they'd all be skips for sure. See Smithy here, just needs to yeah. clear the pack. Don't think he's going to though. No, his speed was pretty good. Yeah. So Cal Healy going back to the mat. Um, as you said, you touched on before, Suchi did he had a great world championship oh, Sydney for his first first major oh sorry, he did go to the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, silver medal the before, as well, but, yeah. Um, first major competition on the on the home soil to walk away with two gold medals. Um, to credit to him, he's been a great player for a long time. Um, so it's good to see him uh, take his opportunity with both hands. He certainly did. It was a bit different to see. Obviously, they reversed in roles too, didn't they? Uh, Aaron and uh, yeah, Carl. Uh, they both took it in turns and both had success. So yeah, it was interesting. Like um, one of the lead ups for the World Championships to pick the team was the multi nations we had in March this year in, on the Gold Coast and. Um, it was actually picked as Carl skipping the fours to start with and they, they had a couple of losses and they swapped it around and next minute they've won the gold medal. Um, so they've kept it yeah, the same okay. and yeah, it's it's worked. Like It's a bit of a luxury, mate. They're both both good players, Carl and Aaron, and Carl hits well. Aaron, can, as we know, can play all the shots. So it just worked to treat them. They're double world champions to... Yep, that's, uh, that's an amazing feat. So the world champs to roll roll around when and where again? Uh, so recently it's just been decided. So it was meant to be 2025 in Hong Kong. Uh, it's been put on hold, so it won't be in 2025. So yeah, I think the the, the next world championship is up in the air a bit in terms of what year that'll be staged and where. Um, so yeah, we'll obviously just wait for wait for feedback from the from World Bowls when they can land on that decision. Um, yeah, and obviously, as we know, there's a bit, bit up in the air with the Com Games as well and where that might land on in 2026. So hopefully um, we can get some sort of major international competition over the next couple of years would be great. 
So is that something that as at Bowls Australia can drive or help drive, or is it strictly you know, World Bowls who will decide that outcome? Yeah, so in terms of the World Championships, it ultimately it's a World Bowls decision, and, and I think... I think for the future of like the sport around the world, it'd be great to see other countries put their hand up and hold a world champ. So um, I, I know in probably the last 20 odd years, it's or 20 years probably, it's only been uh, Australia or New Zealand hosting. So, um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. It's it's a big effort to host such an event. So, um, but yeah, Australia always willing to put their hand up and and help out where we can. Oh, especially when you got venues like the Gold Coast. It's I don't know if there's a better place in the world where you can host a buzz event. Yeah, yeah, the weather, weather's quite nice. Yeah, oh, that's um, sensational. I'm surprised it took me 15 years to move out of Canberra, such oh, into there, mate, to get away incredible. from the Canberra winters. <laughs> how, they, how, those, how good those greens run in June in the middle of winter, it's yeah. just un- unbelievable. All right, so... so state of affairs here, Suchi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like we're still one with Daniel's lead bowl. Second shot will be... Yeah, I think it'll be the bowl in front of it, yeah, with Ben's... Right. Um, yeah, they've all mustered the line here pretty much. <laughs> you see yeah. a big, big row of bowls there. So Lee, yeah, line up with the forehand. He needs to probably change this because Tristan's got a nice little funnel to work through and trail the jack. So he'd be looking to turn Pete's bowl or if he works back to the shot bowl and falls over, he does cover the jack. And Lee's played for three straight uh, states as well, I think. Uh, it's a good home. Yeah, you're right, yeah, Sachi. Tassie, um, yeah. Tassie, Victoria, New South Wales, is it? Yeah, played a lot of games for Victoria, and I think he had probably three three years in Tassie. He's, um, he's they came very close to winning it, didn't they, Tassie? I think he had a rebounding jack that, that cost them the win. Yeah, it's... Yeah, um, bowls can be cruel, can't yeah. it, sometimes? Um, I remember watching that. That was at... It was, was in Tassie, was it? Or? South Australia, South Australia. from memory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just remember everyone was standing around watching. He sunk the jack, couldn't have got it in the belly anymore, and it bounced and back. And it bounced out, room. yeah. Um, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah heartbreaking. Himself. He's switching to the back end now. He'll be looking to just draw a shot. Sneaks pass and counts would be perfect. Played this well. Oh, what a great oh, shot. That's terrific. That's what you do. Makes it look easy. Yeah, a chance here. Forehand trial the jack for three. The New South Wales girls starting to get on top now. 34-16 they're leading. Wasn't there some upsets this morning? Oh, there the, certainly um, was. We were talking about that, yeah. Women's um, competition. Yeah, race out knocking off Queensland. One of the heavy favourites. Yeah, I've got a feeling that's... Oh, it could be... Well, in my time anyway in Canberra and involved in the national scene. I think that's the first time ACT women have been in Queensland, so at an Alley Shield, yeah. which is um which is massive. And yeah. they played they played brilliant. They um deserved the win. Golden Territory girls having a win. Yeah. WA girls more importantly. Yeah, yeah. WA girls having yes. a win. So yeah, plenty it's all, all happening. No. It's um I've got a house full of them staying with me, so it's much <laughs> better for me if they win. So. <laughs> okay, so Tristan he's coming out to look at the head here. Yep, I think that's the way to go. We can say now, as we come down the floor, and we can see that port use a bit of the wing bowl. Yeah, well, he's a couple of bowls high. He can work off Peter Taylor's bowl. So, have you ever played bowls up in the Northern Territory, Howie? Yeah, I have. And? Um, as we see this one. Yeah, hopefully he's going for the edge. Quick. Oh, it's just got the front. Oh, be it's always tough. Couple to New South Wales. Yeah, so I... Um, just the two? Yes. Two. My first ever Alley Shield was in Darwin Bowls Club in 2006, I think it was. Um, right eh? Yeah, so that was back... It was the first time the Alley Shield went from four rinks to three because of oh, the right. facilities. We couldn't fit everybody um, ah, yep. at the venue. Uh, and then I think uh, it was probably about three or four years ago now when... Uh, when Nightcliff and Darwin Bowls Club held the sides, I, I played up there as well. Um, it's a very, very challenging place to play just because of the heat and yeah. humidity. And yeah, it'd be, yeah. Very, it'd be a tough ask, wouldn't it? You've got to keep your fluids up, definitely. Oh, yeah. um, but no, I, I actually really enjoyed Darwin. It was a, it was a nice spot. Um, yeah, it'd be great to try and find, get this event up there one day as well. Are you playing much balls yourself, mate? Still, uh, uh, are you playing at Helensvale? Yes, yep. so yeah, I play at Club Helensvale. Um, 
yes and no, mate. I, I sort of still play Premier League, so that runs usually from sort of January, February through to March and then uh, play pennants. Um, but this sort of time of year, just get too busy with work. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think the last time I played now was end of July. Yep. So um, You spend your life at a bowling club, I don't know what it feels yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I still, I've actually a good mate of mine, my daughter's best friend at school, he's ex-footy player, um, started coming to Premier League and he's hooked. Oh wow, balls. okay. So um, we, we go and have a Friday afternoon roll up and um, every every second day he's messaging me talking about a tournament to go and play oh, in. Nice. So um, yeah, I think he'll he'll drive my passion back into the sport a little bit more Excellent. sort of on the green. So, um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy my time with the, with the kids at the moment where Quite lucky live on the coast, five minutes from movie right, world. It's a lovely, wild, lovely so setup. Try and make the most of it, especially when when Kelsey gets a free weekend off from bowls. So, which wouldn't be often. No. <laughs> no. Uh, good correction for Daniel. Uh, put on the shot, but he's second. Uh, ben needs a little bit on his first. I think he's over, he? overcorrected. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Taylor, he's been around for a very long time, but he's only really just cracked his. Sort of spot in the New South Wales team in the last sort of 18 months, two years, I think. Yeah, he has, mate. You're right. It's as you know, coming from New South Wales, it's such a big state, so many good players, yeah. and there's you always get those hard luck stories of people that never g actually get a chance. No. And it's really good to see Pete get his chance because he's um, like you look at every big singles tournament. Well, he's a in yeah heck of a singles player. New South Wales, player. Queensland, he's won. Yeah, um, he's won a lot, a fair few state titles. So um, yeah, he's a good bloke to go with it. So he's he's definitely bowling well. So Ian Smith's not going to quite get back to the jack there. No, we've got a bit no, of a... He's got just through by metre. Bit of a scuddy head here for these guys. Yes, they've been really tied up to them. Uh, I reckon I could nearly draw this. <laughs> <laughs> Only nearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd expect Peter to make the correction here. He's just got to miss Daniel's bowl either side. Yes, and he Clear certainly has. Good. Yep, he is good. Yeah, well Great correction. Great he job. doesn't waste any time. You see that with a lot of these guys, you know, you, we haven't got too many quick bowlers. Well, probably Blake Nan's our quickest over here, but you see most of these guys, they just they made their mind up and it's yeah. just boom and, and they yeah. execute. It's amazing. Yeah. This is coming from a good yeah, spot. This is a better bowl. Needs to hang on. It's a better bowl. Oh, good just effort. runs off classic XGs. So what's your home club these days, Suchi? I've just gone to Vic Park, oh, uh, okay. which was uh, was the club of Kevin Ice uh, when before he moved over. Uh, uh, right. So it's close to home. Um, we're not in Premier League; we're just a first division club. Yep. But we've actually got Twisty coming out to play a couple of games for us. Okay. Um, he was coming for a holiday, and it just worked out. We've got one double header, and it happens to be the weekend he's here. So he's going to put on a Vic Park shirt and hopefully get us a couple of wins. So he'll lead on your ring. Uh, I don't. Well, it has been brought up, but only by me. <laughs> no, I don't, no one else is with me on that, so I don't, I don't think that'll be happening. No, I think our club president might get the honours of playing three for him, I think. Who would that be? Uh, Pat Keefe. Yes. Uh, we're pretty lucky, we've got a very young... Uh, oh, young Pat. Yeah, we've got, we got a young committee. Yeah, okay. He's a so, good bowler on his own right. Yeah, <laughs> he's uh, all for bowls, and uh, so we want to try and, try and push a bit to be one of the better clubs, so... Qualified for the BPL Cup. Yes, we're off the BPL Cup. Yeah, right. Okay. BPL Cup, so that'll be uh, yeah, that'll be a week of it. <laughs> yeah, very good. Bowls WACO is qualified as well. Yeah, he is. Prime. Yeah, we were very lucky. There was two spots, and we, we both we both took them. So I was sitting there on Sunday night on the couch, and thinking, "Hey, good, this my phone hasn't buzzed." Eight o'clock at night. Ken Pride. Howie, I've won. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah, good on him. He does a draw. <laughs> the finals played at South Perth. So we call it actually. We're going to change it to the Ken Pride Cup. Ken yeah, Pride Cup. Ah, fair call. Oh, good effort there, just shy. Yeah, just shy. It's like one to New South Wales. So Lee's going to have to stick to the forehead, mm. try and draw the shot. Touches, touches a bonus. Yeah, if he can change, if he can trail that jack away, it'll take the shot away from Tristan. Yeah, exactly right there, Doug. Good shot from Northern Territory on the neighbouring rink there. Skipper just drew a side toucher. Yeah, Daniel Baker, he um he performed well in the champion champion singles. I was pretty impressed with yeah, how he yeah, bowled. Okay. Um he was the only one to beat Lee actually, right. first round. Um but yeah, he had a few big scalps along the way. Uh, 
Well, looks like a pretty good line here, Lee. Yeah, speed, speed looks good. Yeah, I don't think he's... What, look at this. What a well, shot. That's how you do oh, it. That's how you, do it. That's how you win end. four Australian singles. That's how you do it. A bit stiff in the end, not to guts that. Mm. But um, hasn't made it any easier for Tristan. No, certainly not. So the neighbouring rink's taking Katera the aggregate board at the moment. Giving him a 13 shot lead. That's game on on this rink. And WA with a very big lead in the men's and against Tasmania, 25-4. And the girls, pretty neck and neck. They might just be behind, actually. Which is how they started the last one, struggling a bit, but they just sort of worked their way into it. And then Christina got got a bit of a skip away, and then the others held on. Yeah, big win for Christina this morning. Just a redial for yeah. Christina. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get to the front of the jack, it would make it uh, extremely difficult. Well, we're blessed at the moment. We've got no wind at so he's, he's on target here again. Clear run. Look at this. This is oh, how you do it. Shot. My name's Lee Schreiner. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, back toucher, front toucher. And acknowledged by Tristan. Fair dinkum. <laughs> Lucky to get two that close in six months. What's his options here for Tristan? He's shaping up on the forehand, so... There's a bit of traffic too, uh, Andrew. It, it doesn't like look all that. The shot. Doesn't look all that pretty. Yeah. He's obviously worried about taking his closest bowl out, but um, it's going to be ver it's gonna be very hard to minimise the damage here. Come on, AC! Tell you what, it's a cracking effort. Without Jack movement. Oh, oh. That is a cracking effort. It's only half of our wide. He would have nearly kicked it with that weight. And three. Takes it to eight, four. So... I'm going to look at this third one. Yep, three. Three it is, so. So you stay right through next week as well, Andrew? Yeah, yep. yeah. So uh, I think my flight's on the 21st. 21st. Um, yeah, so arrived here on the 3rd, home on the 21st. So 18 days. Um, no, it's been great to get over to Perth. We don't get to do it enough, so it's... Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed going to a few new clubs uh, that we've never seen before. And, um, yeah, obviously working with Bowls WA and our event partners, Tourism WA and the city of Joondalup. It's um, been fantastic. So who's the most intense bowler in Australia? Is it Lee Schreiner? Intense. He just, he's just a... Uh, yeah. The concentration he, that just oozes out of him and the intensity as he gets on that mat is... You're probably right. He's very focused. Um... And you just see him at the end of the day after he gets off the green. It's like he's just, yeah, he's just got no energy. He definitely focuses 100%, probably more. Um, yeah, but he's he's a hard hard bloke to beat. Um, as as you, like in life and in sport, it's it's not only ability, but it's also that mental side of if you if you're going to be at the top top of your game. So um, no, he's a great player. Has been for a number of years. Yeah, and Aaron Sheriff's obviously another one. You, you don't beat him too easily nowadays. No, no, he um he, he copped a copped a little bit of a beating yesterday in the in the practice match. Oh, doesn't did he? doesn't happen oh, okay, very right. often and I just happened to be talking to Matty Flapper and I said, Oh, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for everyone else <laughs> come tomorrow and um yeah, he jumped out of the blocks this morning, Sheriff, with a big win. Uh, yeah, great play in the in the peak of his form. He's definitely cool. probably playing Look, he's been a great player for 20 years, or probably longer now, Sachi, but he's probably in the best form of his life oh, I think now, so. I'd say. And, uh, well, to be fair, I, I, don't think, I, th I think Kelsey's in the same boat. And she's unbelievable, obviously, having kids and a family and some time out and then time back in. And to be fair, if anyone if anyone could run down Karen's uh, run rate for Australia, it's, well, I think Kelsey's probably the only one that can do it. Yeah, you, you would think so. Um, yeah, not that not that she really cares or focuses no, on that. No, she it's, wouldn't be focusing on yeah, that. Yeah, I guess it's just she's lucky. She's got that um, pretty good work and, and life balance at the moment with with um, with things. And yeah, she just enjoys the bowls, gets out there and, and really enjoys playing. So, um, but yeah, yeah, her and Omar had that stellar 
12 months. No, I didn't know ever. Last year was, um, it's, I don't think it'll ever be matched. Oh, I, don't I don't know reckon. how many games, yeah, I don't know how many games they won in a row. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So a little critical part of the game coming up now with, it's only a mini break of four, but it's one that can be blown out pretty quickly yeah. if you um, slip it or with these yeah, guys. Yeah, they've... They're just in the intensity that they have with a, you know, mixed with the talent and concentration yep. and skill level and everything they possess. It's one that they'll just, they'll be just forever having that pressure loaded mm. up against the NT boys. Yeah, like like NT, they didn't play a great end last end. Uh, it did take two scrimmers from um, from Serena, but the key is not not to to try and be consistent and not deliver two bad ends in a row. So. Um, you look at Carl now, he's going to the mat, he's got a yard to count, yeah. uh, holding two, draws a little touch around the corner, it'll make it really tough for the NT to get out of this. Ian's parked a couple up in front, doesn't help the cause. And But that's balls, isn't it? That And the wind has well, dropped, so the wind, yeah. yeah, we all do it, absolutely. So the wind's dropped, so the next wind event we'll get might just be as it pumps in from that sou'wester. And it'll be... Played a good shot here. Just going to count and, and sneak yep. past. Count and cover. Just Not looking sure. across at this rink of Aaron Wilson. What a luxury. Ugh. Aaron Wilson skip. Aaron T's third. Corey Wedlock second. Yeah. Matty Miles lead. Yeah. <laughs> You're an international rink playing state bowls. <laughs> Not bad, isn't it? Unbelievable. <laughs> See a great shot here. Tell you what, what an effort. That's a real good shot. Uh, from Jason Smith there. So the AC two girls look like they've continued on their good way. It looks like they're beating Victoria at the moment. Wow. Um, That's it was pretty close. Well, they might just be behind actually. Carl Healy. Yeah, sorry, they're down actually. Up and over, or he trails the jack. What a, a shot. shot. Oh, Carlos. That's Brilliant. what we do. It's just what you, yeah, it's just for fun. Yeah, cracker. So the second for the, on this ring, Ian Smith, he, he tells me that he's Aaron Teaser's uncle, great uncle. Yeah, I believe so. He has mentioned that to me before, Smithy. Um, I've caught up with him a few times. I used to play against him. I caught up with him a few times at the BPL Cup National Finals, and he has mentioned that before. So, yes. Yeah. Interesting fact. And his brother David and sister Robin will be watching, he tells me. So yeah, OK. It's good to have a family following for him. Yeah. Oh, great effort. I said his pet croc's name's Albert, but I think he's pulling my legs at this stage. <laughs> So Karen Murphy jets in tomorrow? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Um, she's no about to be checking out all the uh, all the talent on the green and um, I believe she's playing a number of, um, of the Australian Championship events as well at Joondalup um, next week, so. So I know selection's not your area, but you would know more than most. So how much emphasis do they put on this versus some of the other events we see around the place? Um, yeah, I guess it's always, yeah. So obviously, yeah, as you said, Doug, it's not my area and I'd, I'd be only assuming what the selectors, what goes into that. But um, I guess it's always great to see your talent on the green playing well. But like we, we just sort of spoke about it before where there's a number of players who could easily skip or play second and... Um, yeah, a lot of the time they're not playing in the in the position that they might play for Australia in. So, um, right. yeah. But I think any time you get to you get the best players in Australia all at one location, um, yep. oh, it's got to it's got to mean the world to the selectors to watch them all unfold and see how they play, see how they deal with the pressure. Um, and and you find a lot of these a lot of the Australian players they've got great teams when they play for Australia but their teams might not be as strong when they go back at state level so it's how do they how do they work with that and, and yeah so seeing how they can 
perform at that level as well. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a luxury to come. Yeah, see here. I've seen the selectors around. Dave Stockham's been yeah, here. Stockies I think he's right. over in the corner in the shot. I can see him yeah. watching all the talent. So. Um, I guess in my time when I was playing, this was always a breeding ground for your Australian squads. They picked a number of Australian squads off these events, and um, that was before the days of like the Australian Open and, and all that sort of stuff. So, and we've got the Australian coach here as well. Yeah, Gary Willis. Gaz has been floating around. Yeah, actually, between him and Stocky, and they spent their fair time at the Paras as well, which was good to see. They've they've just had full buy into everything that's been happening. Yeah, they um, Gaz has done a great. Or Stocky's a great selector. Was a great player in his time as well. And um, but yeah, Gaz has done a great job since. Obviously, he had big shoes to fill with with Steve Glasson's departure as national coach a few years ago now. But um, I I was very lucky to. As a kid, I actually played at Gary Willis's club, and I led for him for a number of years in Grade One. And um, the one thing Gary always did well is he, he he brought a side together. He just had that ability to to gel the team. And, and as soon as he got named as Australian coach, I, I was yeah, no doubt in my mind he would do a great job. And he's um, he's created a great culture. Um, but um, yeah, so and, and obviously results have, have proven that with with the world champs. But um, and early and the most successful. Uh uh, result uh, north of the north uh, in obviously in the UK uh, yeah, the Commonwealth Games, Games. I think yeah. it was Australia's best ever I think I think it might have been just shy it was close but just shy on Adelaide in 2012 but that was that was exceptional here comes the wind here comes the WA wind Doug's just put his finger in the air yeah. to see which direction it's coming from um, sea breeze but yeah it's any time every, every member of the team walks home with a medal uh, it's pretty special so tomorrow morning we'll have Queensland against Victoria. So we'll have Aaron Sheriff against Dylan Fisher. Oh, what a match so that would be. That should be an absolute cracker. And tomorrow afternoon we'll have uh, the AC2 girls, Chloe Morrison, and they'll be taking on Northern Territory, uh, Alyssa uh, Rigoni. Rigoni, yep. yeah. Yeah, Chloe's a, um, I think she's an emerging jackaroo in the emerging jackaroo squad. Um, yeah, uh, well, she did very well in the uh, the indoor as well. I, I think she's actually one of the few that managed to get a win over Kelsey. Yeah, she did. She did beat Kelsey uh, yeah, and progress through to the semi-finals. Um, but yeah, no, some definitely some good matchups coming up on the live stream. So New South Wales straight back to their preferred length. Yep, T to T. Yeah, it's one of those things you know to expect, especially when playing Schreiner. He he loves T to T. You watch him in his singles games. Um, Aaron Sheriff's another one. Ditch to ditch. I've, I've played a bit with him over over my time and. It's um, yeah, they're just they're just great at this length, and I, I suppose there's there's more margin for error, such if you when you're playing the little estates, they're yep. probably more likely to play yep. a few loose ones, um, and that's how yep. you can really jump on top of a team. Well, the Northern Territory boys on the second ring, they're throwing this back at New South Wales. Yeah, if that's what you want, we'll give it to you. Yeah, like I, you, you look at the dynamics of Disco's rink, I think they're a different team. They're they're aggressive, an aggressive team, and uh, I think the short lengths. Just watching a few ends they've played already this today is the go for them. Near Jack near the ditch, Disco's got a great runner, Teasy. Um, I think that's how they win most of their games. Um, so it's probably not a bad tactic by the no. MT boys. See the fixed answer of uh, Ben. It's quite a quite a smaller step at the end there. It's funny. It's it's looking at uh, looking at the sport of bowls. You look across the green. Not one person's got the same delivery. Um, no. Everyone's got their unique habits. They do, and um, oh, I don't have the same delivery two bowls on a row. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling, uh, mate. Um, yeah. So no, it's it truly is a good. Like you look at sports like cricket and stuff. Yeah, they they got similarities, but bowls, no. Nah. Everybody's different. Peter Taylor here down the forehand. He's played a great shot. Nails it early. Yep. He's really put uh, put him under the pressure the last few ends, uh, Peter. So can Smithy respond here? Matty Miles, but another one, sort of Andrew, that sort of took him a while to sort of make it, and then now he's, he's held on for a couple of years as well. Been... Quite a dominant lead. Yeah, yeah, he's times. um, yeah, he's been a good player over the last few years. I actually made my New South Wales debut with Maddie in the same rink. Yeah, he was okay. the lead, and I was the second. And um, 
yeah, no, he's uh, he's been a great player for a long time. Just steady, just just knows his yeah. job. Um, like you, you look at the rink he's in, he's got three superstars coming after him. Um, he's got to try and make their life easier, and yeah, and he does a does a great job leading up. So Smith, he needs about a yard of weight on his last. To have overplayed it. Yeah, you've got to be careful here, the NT boys. I think mm. the it's just that critical part of the game where the we may see the momentum swing be cause them a bit of grief. Well, if they can hang in there, because the far ring's only within foot. It's just the middle ring that's sort of a bit of a blowout at the moment. But yeah, so to keep it tight. But um, yeah, the last few ends they've just gone off the boil a little bit and. Presenting New South Wales with a few options, chances to get some scores. Well, the girls have really jumped out, 49-21 though, they don't lead. Uh, not just shy of the halfway mark. Yeah, they won't be happy with this morning's result. So, fair crowd watching, yeah, watching good the numbers. game. Right? Yeah, good numbers. Yeah, it must be the commentary team, I think, they've come to see. Big shot here needed by Jason Smith. Pressure on. Played two good ones last end. Try and draw the shot. Take it a bit easier for his skipper. Just Watch. slips around the back. Third shot. Very good effort. See if I can get us some scores, Sachi, on the yeah, low scoring. Yeah, thank you, mate. That'd be great. Um, yeah, a few of the master balls are just a bit out of our view. Yes. Well, we can see WA. WA are going okay against Tassie. 31-9 in the guys. And the girls are neck and neck. I think they've just hit the front by two or three. Yeah, so so the, the other ones are just a bit too far out of reach, out of our view. So yeah. um, we've got the um, so ACT versus Victoria. The ACT men are currently leading 25 to 24 over Victoria, so a close game there. And in the women, Victoria have now hit the front. They're up 24 to 18. Uh, what else we got here? Looks like the Queen the Queensland SA are just about to be updated, so I'll just uh, hold off a sec for those ones. So, Lee Farrell spoke about slowing the game down earlier on to Suchi, so um, I'm not sure it's going to make that much difference. You just can't slow the talent down. There's it's the um, it's a tricky one because you do you, you find uh, you find yourself playing as quick as these guys do. Um, they sort of have a way of trapping you into going at their speed. Yeah, it's you're right. It's I suppose when it, if things aren't working right, it's it is can be a ploy to try and slow things mm. down. I, th I think the rink they're playing are, are not quick players. Like you look at like a disco and a twisty, they're all pretty and um, teasy. They're all pretty quick on the no, mark. Then I'm looking around on that twelfth so end already. It's just, uh, I suppose with slowing down, what probably Lee's referring is just probably gives yourself time to think as well. Mm, like yeah. think about the tactics. Um, Make sure the game doesn't slip away before you've got a chance to really think about, well, geez, we, if we win this end, what, what yeah. length should we be playing? Or maybe my lead should be playing the other hand. He's struggling coming this way. So um, yeah. so how much time would they have spent? To, you know, we, they talk about tactics and the length they're playing, but the changing conditions that, you know, we that as West Australians, we would have expected this to happen. We, know that, you know, we knew it was going to happen. So would they discuss that or would they just play the game as what's in front of them at the time? Yeah, I, I reckon they would, um, unless they really knew the conditions, Doug, yeah. But um, I suppose now it's clearly noticeable the wind's picked up. You'd be saying to your team, hey, guys, just wind's up, just make see what it's doing. Um, oh. But they're, they're all experienced players. They'll 
they yeah. go out with their set game plan um, and then they'll just tweak it if need be throughout the game. So yeah. Absolutely whopper there from Schrader. Yeah, yeah. man, well, that's made it hard. Um, I, feel, I feel for Tristan here. He's, he's, he's had a few ugly heads to play to and this one's not much better. Um, I think the over East guys too, Andrew, sort of helps. Obviously with New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, um, they're all quite close to each other. So, that, I mean, they get the opportunity to play against each other in warm-ups every year as well. So they, by the time they've got to this stage, they've had they've had nine, ten games under yep. their belt playing with each other. So they, they get plenty of time. So they know each other's game inside out. Where I think that's one of the hardest things for us. Um, you know, a lot of the guys don't get that much of a chance to play together. This year was a bit different. Yeah, we, we, did. we managed to have a test this year, which yeah, was great. The Victorians were kind enough to come over yeah. and play five tests against us. It's um, yeah, you're right. It's it's tough. Like for eleven and a half months of the year, these people are playing against each other, and then you've got to try and put them together and make a team. So it's not easy. You need to need to work out your your strengths and your weaknesses with your players and what shots you should be calling them on. So. Um, but um, yeah, and I suppose it's trying to find that balance, that players that will gel together as well, Suchi. And that's why it's one. It's not an easy job playing at this level, but it's not an easy job selecting Sweet teams that can win. Um, yeah, it's okay. very tough. So, how long is average uh, the pennant season that you were talking about, Howie? Yeah, in Queensland. So yeah. our season's quite short. Um, so on the goal, I play at the Gold Coast District. So. Um, I think this year was about seven weeks and then a week of finals. Um, so it's sort of split up into two halves our season. So we play our play our Premier League um, in the Premier League Queensland, which kicks off around January normally through to March. Uh, Pennant starts in July after the Australian Open, usually the first weekend after Australian Open sometimes. Um, and then you sort of play your district, go through and play your regional level, and then a state finals is normally in November. Yeah, um, yeah so... It, it's not a long season, but if you play Premier League and pennants, it works out to be yep. sometimes 16 weeks, so it, it can be a long, long year. So as we're talking to Lee, the challenges they have with a, just the climatic conditions, you know, the numbers, etc. and yeah, they structure it completely different, but that's just how it is. So yep. what's, what shot has he got on here? He can get through a yeah, gate there. Looks uh, Jack High Bowl, yeah, can sit. Lee will be looking to try and play similar to his last shot. Jersey on. I think he's got enough weight to get there, I think. Oh, he's a class. I think, Great I think he's done it. Oh, he's very close. Geez, his weight control's been could come uh. about this way. Um, I think his last four bowls, he's had four within a foot. Incredible. Oh, well, he's going again. Really, uh, I think he's going to need some luck on this, uh, Andrew. Yeah, hit and hope. Uh, he's just uh. missed the target. So another score to New South Wales. Mm. Yeah, the other two rinks are pretty close. There's only a couple of difference in the other two rinks. It's uh, probably a good county of three or four here, possibly for... Yeah, they're just, just falling into a bit of a trap. With, as you can see, a few short bowls there in the road. If I was Tristan, I'd be asking, try and get your lead and your second to start reaching, even if they're, even they're getting past, just to try and potentially give him some better heads to play to. So the tape's out. Chopped. Here we go. It's going to be in four, so it four. is. Wow. Okay, I've got some scores while we do that in the uh, South Australia Queensland game. Oh, close one in the men. It's 29 all. Yes. Queensland and South Australia. And in the women, wow. Queensland women lead 27 21 over South Australia. said before, New South Wales women lead 50 to 25 over the NT on this green. 
Looks like Daniel must have lost the jack then, because... Uh, yes, then, uh, he did. Yeah, straight away, Matt up. Change the length, good idea. Got to try something different here. And the, the wind is, continues to increase. It'll probably peak about here this time of day. So, halfway mark in this game. Of course, now 13 4. Just need to get our board updated. Yep, he playing in the lemon. Probably lucky Monday's only a half day, Andrew. I think it's 37 on Monday. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah right. Terrific, terrific for mid October. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very fortunate indeed then. I think the greens will be needing the water by then. Oh yeah, a, I think uh, they'll get a nice. Uh, yeah, they'll be flying. They'll get a nice drench, I think. Good correction from Ben. Good so, shot. so a question we get asked, Andrew, is is the paces the pace of the greens? Do you have any um, recommendations to the green keepers? Do you have a preference to the pace you would like a green being prepared for a side series? Yeah, so we our normal go-to for national events is sort of 14 to 16 seconds. Um, if they're slightly slower, it's not the end of the world, as long as obviously they're true. Uh, if they're slightly quicker, it's not the end of the world. So, um, yeah, so that's the sort of guidelines we work towards. Um, so normally when we contract a club to, to be a host venue, that's one of the things we look at. We look at their greens, um, the standard. And, and I think that the other thing we've got to think about is a lot of our national events are time limited, so um, we don't want the greens too quick. We want the players to be able to get through their games. Um, yeah, so, but no, I think they're at the perfect pace at the moment. Um, no, naturally, they're probably going to get a little bit quicker over the next couple of days with, with the warm weather. Um, but yeah, no, beautiful greens here at Sorrento. Shot here from Charles. Next door, Aaron Wilson's just played a bomb. Yeah. One of many. Uh, good shot, Pete. This is what's a set? Two foot overweight. They just get to and through a little yep, bit. Yep, that's the uh, that's the weight. And they always stay in the game. They're there, they're there and thereabouts. Well, it's an important uh, important tip there for uh, probably a newer bowlers watching at home that if you miss where you finish. It's yeah. such a big key. You've got to keep as many bowls in play as you can. Great shot, Smithy. And it's all about the skip, mate. You've got to leave it, leave it open for the skip. Well, the more, yeah, the more bowls you've got in the head, I suppose the more opportunity your skipper's got. Yeah, it's so. just knowing your role, really. is. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to build the head. You, I guess as lead or second, you don't necessarily need the shot. It's, it's trying to make Carl's job or Lee's job uh, easier. So... Um, yeah, the last thing you want is just having to draw you out of trouble. No, five or no, six down. That's or right. Like. So, um, just by the indication there by Carl with his foot, he might be playing some sort of weight here. Some weight. That'll be arriving quickly Ooh. and misses. Kill weight. Yep, no mucking around there. So, does he draw another one? or I think so, yeah. Or a cover? Well, I think at that weight, I think... I don't know if Carl can see all the jags, so I think it's probably going to kill if he hits the jag. He just draw it around the corner here. Might make it a little bit hard for him to get to, so... Yeah, I think so. Even he, if he sort of lands somewhere near, like between Smithy's second bowl and the jack, he might change the angles up and, and make it a little bit tougher, but he's had a real good shot here. It was a cracking effort, Cow's finishing a great spot. Played. Clean, bit unfortunate there, but um, 
little chance here for NT. Yeah, they're hanging in there quite well, the NT boys. So quite close in the other two rinks. This one's yeah. only sort of just got away a little bit in the last couple. Aaron Wilson's just got a five next door. Is he? Yeah. Way Lee's drawing, Sachi, I'd like to see him draw this. The last few years, yeah. oh, Wacker draw's yeah. been impeccable. Um, even even if his first one draw gets second, might give himself something else to play. <laughs> well, I think he is trying to. I think he is. So, not going the big sig. So you were looking for the one one wood here? No, but he's decided. Yeah, he's trying to draw it. Well, his, weight was, his weight was good enough to draw it. Yeah, I think the problem was the angles. He he really had the shot by well nothing. So back himself to at least try and get second shot. His weight was perfect, as you said, Suchi. But um, door slightly ajar here for Tristan. Can play a big one here. on the backhand here if he can just get a little touch of that jack just trail it out of sight if he gets it right he can nearly make four just got to have the run now his line's terrific for it I don't think he has got the run though well is that going to change Lee's shot I think it might I'm going to get play yard of weight down on the uh, or a couple of yards down on the um, forehand there turn Peter's bowl sit the shot bowl and stay only danger if he gets it onto the jack. Probably three down anyway. Go big. Big's the call. So forehand big. Frustrated with that one. Second shot to the side or behind? Yeah, I think it's the one behind. Well, it might be, be close three. for three here. Yeah. I was going to say, if it's not three, he could um, try and trail the jack there, but. Um, Very close to it. Yeah. Just not going to add two feet on his last, he'll count. Needs to stop now. How far is he going to trail it? Oh, he's very unlucky. Mm. Very stiff. So, a couple. Just the two. Well, Andrew, really appreciate your time, mate. Obviously, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of people don't realise just what goes into these events, but certainly appreciate your time, mate. And uh, keep up the good work, mate, and we'll, uh, we'll see you around the traps. No, thanks for having me, guys. You're doing a great job. Thank see you. See you tomorrow. So, we... So the revolving doors revolved again. And we welcome welcome to the hot seat. No one other than Matthew Kennedy, the CEO of Bowls Australia. Ten months into the job. What are your impressions of it so far? And of course, do you know Lee Such like everyone else does in it? You do now. <laughs> you betcha. Lord Thanks. Lee. Everyone does. Thanks a lot, Doug. And, and hi, Lee. Oh, geez. Great to be here. You've certainly uh, certainly turned it on in Perth with some uh, amazing weather, and it's great to see some uh, fantastic bowls as well. And um, yeah, look, I think uh, 10 months into the job, Doug, uh, biggest impression for me is just how wonderful local community bowls clubs are and just the role that they play and um, we've got 1800 of them throughout the, throughout the country and I've just been so lucky to, to see all the different sizes and shapes and just what they bring to the community and you know events like this are a great example when you see the the volunteers and, and the work that they do to put on such a fantastic show that WA's putting on at the moment. 
and this live streaming. Matthew, with your background, you'd be used to televising the sports you've been involved in, but live streaming and bowls? Look, I think um, bowls has done a fantastic job with the, the way it's evolved its, its live streaming and, um, you know, uh, the, what you guys have been putting here together uh, over the last few weeks. And it's, it's clear that um, from all the feedback from all the states, the, the viewership and the enthusiasm for tuning into the live streaming is great. And I think that at, at any sport, um, we've got to, you know, keep moving with technology and, and the like and we're, we've got our bowls link program for community clubs and you know it's an evolving thing but we've got to make things as easy as possible for clubs and administrators and and make the sport as accessible as possible to those that want to view it and uh, that's what you're doing here today and, and so coming to Perth your first not your first time to Perth but to an event that we're holding um, would you surprised at the facilities and the greens and and what was put on the table f- from WA well, I think, you know, it, the, oh, it was fantastic getting here. I think it was in May, Doug, you kindly invited me over for your awards night and got to know a bit of the, uh, many of the, the WA bowls community. But to be here and, and see the first time that you guys have hosted the whole combined nationals, the festival element of it, and the, just all the reports from... Uh, uh, all the reports from, from Warwick for the, the Paranationals and Jindal up for the senior sides and then just to see the show that Sorrento's putting on here today, it's just it's just outstanding. And the crowd? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? I mean, I, I had to pop off for some meetings and I struggled to get a car park yeah. back, back yeah. in, Duck, so um, it's it's got a real buzz, a real buzz about it and uh, uh, great atmosphere. I've spoken continually as I've had to had the mic a fair bit during the week, but uh, about an opportunity for WA bowlers and supporters to see their family and, and our, our stars and, and all the stars from all over Australia in the one place. It's just an opportunity that we just cherish and, and, and hope, and we'll get it again in 26, So, yeah. but I can just see the big contingent behind our WA players and making a bit of noise, and it's just good to see, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. So full credit to, to Bowls WA and everyone involved in getting the support from WA Tourism. Um, and and the, and the efforts of the clubs too, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm sh- sure it's not going to be unnoticed, Doug. Just how, how exciting it is. Yeah, City of June have also been very kind yeah. to us, all, with all three host clubs within their, within their locality. So, and that's been good to get that on board. So it makes yeah. it, the clubs having the support of of their local governments. Is yeah, all great. levels of government yeah. that you've secured, fantastic. So there's the headset up here, Suchi. Yeah, um, well, Benny Trainer actually dobbed two one, but Peter Thale didn't muck around with it. Uh, getting a jack straight in the ditch, and he's drawn. Well, so far, it's the best one, but so it would have been a pretty busy ten months for you since you came on board, um, Matthew. Obviously, the World Championships uh, would have been uh, not too far after you started and into the Australian Open, so pretty much uh, no settle in period straight into it. Yeah, I know you just had Andrew Howley on, and he, he has said to me he's been around for a while. It's the biggest event year he's ever had to deliver. Yeah. You know, it started off with the. The VPL, so I think 17 in Moama, and then we had a multi nations on the Gold Coast, and then the Australian Open. The, the numbers were just incredible. Oh, incredible really. yeah. 3,700 entries, over 3,000 individual uh, players. So it was using every piece of green space we could find on the Gold Coast, we were. And then next thing you know, into August for the, the World Champs, which when we originally uh, signed up to host and was going to have something like 23 countries and ended up with 44. It's not bad, and, is it? Yeah, it's fantastic. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, over here for the Nationals and um, and then we've got BPL in, in Club Pine Rivers um, next month as well. So it's been, you know, international and national level events right throughout the year. And um, I think that's really exciting for the sport. It keeps showing it through live stream and the broadcast. And you mentioned before, Doug, I think, you know, the way that... Um, the AO and the BPL are broadcast now. The, the level, the quality of the broadcast on Foxtel and KO and the like, it's uh, a real big big feature of the sport. So busy 10 months, parachuted out of a completely different sport. So in that 10 months, what's, what has impressed you the most in you know your role in, in this new role and, and bowls? Look, I, I think just the passion amongst that huge community of 1,800 clubs and how they're all so different... Um, Regional clubs, country clubs, metropolitan clubs, the big commercial clubs, the volunteer clubs, they all in their own way bring a really special thing to their local their local community and demographic. And there's so much more than bowls clubs. At the heart of them is bowls clubs, but for so many, they, they host activities and music and events and functions, and they're a real, real centrepiece for people to, to really enjoy each other's company as well as uh, 
play a great sport and keep challenging themselves to get better. So challenges, brought that word up, challenges ahead for you, or maybe for the game. Yeah, look, I think, I mean, looking around the greens here, Doug, you, we've got, you know, the vast majority of our Jackaroos, the best bowlers in the country all throughout these teams, and I do feel for him at the moment. There's a bit of uncertainty at the international level. Obviously, you've had the, the cancellation of the 2026 Common, Commonwealth Games in Victoria and uncertainty yet as to a new location. And World Bowls recently advised that the, the planned World Championships in Hong Kong in 2025 won't go ahead as planned. And there's uncertainty there as to the location and timing of those. And So I think that's a challenge for the sport is... Um, you know, these, these outstanding athletes uh, out here apply, applying their trade today have a, have a, have a, lot, to, uh, a, a lot of uncertainty at the moment. I think we need to really balance that and make sure that we're working hard to provide opportunities. So bring us up to date on this well, end, <laughs> Lord Sutch. Sorry, Lord. No, 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 unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. We've got a bowl hanging on the lip. <laughs> at least Rainer was just trying to tip it in. It's just sitting on. And this is a fair effort as well. I'll tell you what, he's got it. He's got <laughs> it. Great shot. Great shot followed by another great shot. My goodness, all happening here, Jack in a ditch. Oh, 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 oh. He's looking to sit this ball in. He's looking at it. I don't think he's cleared the front though, but what's going to happen? Oh, oh, no. Eight. Oh no, he's got oh. it. Oh, he's done it. <laughs> he's done it. <laughs> Well, he apologises. Yeah. If, you have, if you reach, you can have luck. Yeah, and it's, uh, that he did wasn't the intention, but nope. it was um, the result nope. that they needed or wanted. So they've jumped away a bit now. The New South Wales uh, boys are starting to put it together. In the second half, they've jumped out to a 49-26 lead, and the girls are in about the same boat, 54-27. So pretty solid effort from. Both fronts, as you'd expect. So, Matthew, um, you've been full on since you know you've come in this last 12 months. So you wouldn't have had a chance to get into you know Tassie, ACT, NT um, for a look yet, um, but you'd have a feel for it. Yeah, most of, I did get a chance to get down to Tassie for one of the, uh, the regional meetings and saw yeah. a couple of local clubs there. Um, I think it's a great part of the sport, isn't it, the diversity across the country. Um, it's just outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're obviously Northern Territories and this side's so playing and we're streaming yeah. back into it. Um, yes, just the challenges that we had Lee, uh, Lee Farrell on earlier and talking about the challenges they have and how they go about things and it was really really interesting for us the numbers of course they're minnows compared to a New South Wales but you know it's still an important part of of the social fabric and the sport and the culture up there is is having bowls it plays a big part they've got their first covered green um, which is great hopefully get multiple amounts of those in the t in the territory would be would be good that'll grow the sport even more yeah it's actually really exciting news for the territory isn't it and I think the success is any in any state is just really uh, it's the gross sum of the success of each individual club so I think as the national body and state bodies our roles to help each club to be as, as good as it can possibly be and then the gross yeah. sum of all of that is the state success and then the the, the gross sum of all the state success is the national success so it all starts at the individual club and um, finding ways to support them to be as good as they can possibly be. And and on on a BA field again is um, AGM coming up before long. Yeah, we've got the AGM on uh, November eighth. Actually, It'll be, be yep. my first one. Yeah. Some people up for re-election. Yep. Uh, re election Yeah. Well, yeah. There's an election for two spots, and we've got two nominations. Um, uh, David Pruss from uh, the ACT and Graham Hay from Tasmania have been nominated. Previous board member or David's um, f former president of Tasmania, maybe? I believe so. Just uh, most recent past president of... Uh, no, Graham, the most recent past president of Tasmania and David, the most recent past president of the ACT. Yeah, oh, right out. Yeah. Right out. Yes. Peter Taylor, he doesn't waste any time straight in the mat and delivered. So I'll draw a shot. Not too far away with his first. Pretty close again. 
Carl just waved it in, it's two good bowls. Those ooze class, don't they? To Jack Hughes, I think he's just got the gap though. Oh, just grazed it on the way through. But he did give it a chance. NT yeah. boys only picked up two shots in the last six ends, so it's really critical part of the game, you know, to stop this blowout. If they can just chisel away and get a one or a two here and there, and just see if they can stop the momentum. Yeah, I think that's just the hardest part for the for the NT guys. Like they show that they're really competitive and, and they are but the, you just see the class once it gets to the second half and the business ends so that yeah. you know that you see that the experience that really comes out yeah that I mean they talk about breaking a game here down the 21 ends down into the 777 and we saw that you know just being an arm wrestle for that first seven and then the next seven we're seeing them establish their, their yep. strength and their position because yep. these guys unfortunately if you have an end off these guys can put a five or six on you pretty easily so. yeah yeah Tuesday, having a look at this guy's ball coming in. Pretty happy over there. All fives all round. So, Jason, had a look at the head. Probably at least two down, maybe three. So, I dropped four multiples in the last, last seven ends. And that's the difference, isn't it? So... How long are you hanging around here for, Matt? Are you here next week as well? Or? Yeah, I'll yeah. be here to, here to Wednesday, so right through to the end of the sides and then also uh, uh, first day of the championship. Mate, Tuesday, Tuesday's the main event, mate. You get to see some world-class bowls, <laughs> mate. It's probably the best, best game you've ever seen. I've heard, I've heard yeah. that on the, on the street, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be an experience, that's for sure. Um, so, Matthew, your background? Yeah, look, for those who don't know, I've uh, only ever worked in sport management, Doug, for for <laughs> over thirty years now. So I had um, had nearly uh, yeah nearly twenty years in cricket. So at state level, Victorian Cricket Association back then it was known for seven and a half years, and uh, then I was with International Cricket for ten years, um, global development manager there, and based out of London, and then out of Dubai when we moved offices to sort of. Uh, working on developing some of those um, emerging countries like those playing in the World Cup in India at the moment, the Afghanistans and the, and the Netherlands yeah, wow. that, have, that have got there. And then sticking this sort of state sport management, was lucky enough to be um, CEO of Tennis Victoria for eight years okay. and then on the um, executive at Swimming Australia for three years before uh, being really wrapped to get this job done. Yeah, wow, excellent. That's the upside. Downside, Collingwood supporter. <laughs> no downside at the moment, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it certainly was a great final. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? It's, uh... You get to the game? No, I got to the preliminary final, but I, I couldn't squeeze it for a ticket, but uh, I had a great time going out and watching it with my mum and dad at, at their house. It was fantastic. Didn't get to the 2018 one? No, you don't you guys start, <laughs> please. <laughs> I mean, you, you look at the you look at the middle ring there. The fellow from Northern Territory is about six inches behind it. And he's two down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're just plonking him in at the moment, New South Wales. So Matthew, this the Northern Territory skipper Tristan Smallcombe played 104 games for WA. Oh, okay. So he's well known. Um, he'd have a lot of support through the crowd. Yeah. Very popular man. Very talented bowler when he was here, of course, to play that many state games and you know and really well respected. So there'll be a lot of support up there for him. Well, he's got some work to do here. He's in all sorts. But he's giving it a sniff. Inside. Look at inside. This gets the old sneaky. Well, that's going to help a lot anyway. I think he was close to five down. So third shot. Very close to it. That will be. Oh, two. Yep, so, yep, third shot. Okay, so that's the call. Five or six. So, and, and more than capable, Lee Schreiner, of doing this. Oh, 
fun in the game. Through gallery. the gate. So the Crocs get together, quick meeting, decide the shot. Yep. They're all on the same page. Well, he doesn't have to do too much differently. He's got his own ball there he can use. I don't really think he's got too much else on. He's got Ben's ball there at the front, so he's got a couple of balls he can use. I think he's just got to give it a chance in there. Just channel it down there on the forehand. Well, he's looking at it. Watching, he's followed it down. Well, they're having a look, they're interested. Well, he's trying to dead draw this. If you tell you what, if he's got the gap here, he's really close. Oh, awesome. Oh, well, it's just going to fall oh. against the bias, but his second shot. Why he's so highly regarded and respected. Well, he's done very well there because that could have been ugly, that end. Uh, but it's another one of the Blues as they march further in front. 17-6. After 13, the scoreboard agrees with me. That's good. See the scoreboards behind us by any chance, Lord Touch? Yeah, uh, WA in the men are 35 19 in front. Yes. And the girls are, well, 28 all. So. Halfway mark? Yeah, cliffhanger in the girls. A lot of them play up here during the winter, so they should be used to all, all being. Yeah, well, the girls, uh, they're though. certainly prepared uh, and they had a very good. Had a very good test series when the Victorians came out and a, and a, and a good win over New South Wales this morning. morning so yeah. uh, they've done very well so far, WA girls. Well, Daniel, Daniel Hill's got the team off to a pretty good start. Be looking to repeat that. So it hasn't been easy for the players. That you know, that's a, one of the challenges we have here is you'll get the direction of the wind will be in two different spots. You know, you can get a cracking easterly then breaks down to nothing oh, and, and then round into that sea breeze. No, I know when it took, when it took me quite doctor. a while. It took yeah. me quite a while. They, they all talked about that free man doctor. I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Yeah. So um, one of the doctors that doesn't make you feel better sometimes. Yeah. Until you adapt to it, then it's your best friend. Well, two great bowls from Daniel. Yeah, Jerry's first bowl. So have you adapted to it yet? Uh, well, this is my sixth season coming up and I still don't think I have. here from Benny, just to run as far as I can, it's about a second one, just not be happy with that, you see Lee calling Peter Taylor there just to make sure that he's up, just to try and pass ahead if he can, Northern Territory boys will obviously be trying to reach with their bowls, trying to sit and, sit and trail the jack, oh, we won't be happy with that, not one of Peter's better ones. I might, might force him to play a little bit more weight though. Well, he's going to change his hand, go to the backhand. So, Matthew, did you realise that bowls were so busy? I know 23, we've had everything <laughs> backed up together. And, yeah, so uh, did, did you expect that? Are you prepared for how busy it is? Look, I probably didn't realise just how big and busy it is, Doug. And I think that's a fantastic feature of it. And something that we probably need to... Um, to really tell the story and celebrate a bit more, just you know how much fantastic bowls goes on in the big events and how big the footprint of bowls is right across every state of Australia. And I think it's something that I'm really keen to to yeah, really celebrate more and tell the story of more. Bit, bit like what I was saying before about the role that we play in so many communities throughout the nation. Yeah, I mean the game itself is is great and we know that, but it's, it's also the social significance of the sport. That's the bit that with my involvement now with what I do is that I see time and time again as the enabler for communities to become tighter um, you know and yes bowls gets played at a really high level but that's just part of the apex so but but below that is a mag you know this this massive triangle full of people doing so much and and, and the money that's raised 
I know I can only speak from a West Australian perspective, Matthew, but that's raised to go back into the varieties and bushfire appeals and all sorts of community things that um, is really touching to the heart and the, the generosity and how they embrace everyone and anyone and, and it's a really good focus, it's a really great message, it's a fantastic sport. Without a doubt, and as you say, the, the everyone piece there, the whole diversity and inclusion, we're, we're sport for everybody and um, as you say, it's uh, such an exciting and great part of so many people's lives but it also contributes so much back to other people's lives as well as you mentioned. Did you know that before you started? That was, you know, you didn't have massive, you know, yeah. a lot of involvement in sport, yes. Yeah. But in the bowls, do you have family that play that you knew and followed? Yeah, look, I think a big appeal to, to put my hand up to throw my hat in the ring was uh, a real appreciation for community bowling clubs and just the role that they play. So, But I don't think I really appreciated the depth and breadth of, you know, how significant the numbers are and the impact that it has. And the social involve. I mean, so you know, the, like the, we have our pennant playing bowlers that are fully committed, but the social involvement, social bowler involvement, and the numbers around that. So, yeah. is that a challenge too, or a, how do you see that that number? Is something that's not captured quite right yet? Yeah, look, I think it's the key to our future. To be honest, I think um, our role as, as a sport is to to help every club to bring as many people. Through its, through its doors and onto its greens and into its club rooms as possible and to me anyway that's fine it doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to be competition bowls um, anything that brings them to the club and provides them with an opportunity to if they want to start playing competition or pennant that option's there but equally if you want to have a, have a role uh, socially with your mates um, that's only going to bring great things to the clubs as well in my view Let's have another bit of a run here. I think he's tight again though, so it's just going to run away. New South Wales in a pretty good position again here. And you certainly would have seen uh, some difference in some of the size of the clubs uh, from one end of the country to the other. Um, I know coming uh, from St John's Park. Right. I'm not sure if you've been there yet. Not yet. But uh, yeah. a seven storey car park and really have world-class facilities, some of those clubs over east, and yeah, they're certainly very, very lucky. Yeah, there's no doubt, uh, all shapes and sizes. Yeah. And, uh, well, it certainly helps them, because obviously uh, they've got a lo lot of other avenues of, of money-making, so they can afford yeah. to renovate grass greens every year, and it's a bit tougher for some of the uh, smaller states. Uh, I mean, just, just for us to be able to get these greens ready through winter. Yeah. Um, it was an incredible effort, really, to get them to this standard. Yeah. It's great to see even those big commercial clubs like you mentioned, just how bowls still remain, absolutely remains oh, 100%. at the heart. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. No, they certainly do support players and uh, and, and the community too as well, so no, without them. Let's just push with this one a little wide. I think he's just trying to get a bit of cover. So how long's your stay here, Matthew? Yeah, I'll be heading back Wednesday, Doug. So looking forward to, I'm sure uh, the weekend here is going to be a great atmosphere, um, building even further upon the great atmosphere that he is, that's here today, and then looking forward to a couple of couple more days early in the week. Yeah, we certainly have plenty of bowls coming your way and tomorrow. Queensland versus Victoria in the men's. We'll have that first up. Absolute crack of a game. We'll have Aaron Sheriff. Against Dylan Fisher. Oh, we've got a dead end. Oh, great hit there from Tristan. And Northern Territory will uh, feature the girls in the afternoon against ACT. So we have Chloe Morrison against Elisa Rieni. So plenty of bowls coming over the next few days. So we'll be very, very lucky with the weather, Matthew. Anyway, uh, 37 degrees to finish off with on Monday. <laughs> yeah, be nice. I heard you mention that before, yeah, Andrew. Before we, <laughs> before we head off to June up. Is that, uh, is that normal October weather Not here? really, no. Well, not since I've been here, it hasn't. 
He'll get the odd day, yeah, but to uh, back back up with those that many thirties in a row, it's a bit scary for yeah second week of October. Could be a long summer, you think, Lord Such? Uh, yeah, well, those that know me well over here, I'm not the greatest under the heat. The lucky part is, come Monday, we only get the half days, isn't it? Yeah, so the half just one day, game, so, so yeah, we'll be done by time. Yeah, before it gets too hot, so. So how will they manage the greens? Um, Should be right. Yeah. Be, might be a bit slick by, yeah, well, by well, Sunday afternoon, they yeah, might be humming. I, I dare say they might get a light water at some stage. Second bar's got plenty of room to draw this. Got yeah, they've left him, he's left himself for him, but yeah, close to a metre. Got the right amount of rolls. Yeah, I think he's overcooked it a bit. Yeah, it's going to run through, but obviously a handy spot back there. Oh, Peter Taylor, no mucking around. No, he's they're on and no. uh, they just see shot, play shot. They don't have to get up there and think about. No, no wasting time, that's for sure. And this is the result too when they do it. It's in more an instinct than a. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, I anything. just think they just feel it. Yeah, it's. They just what? they just feel the weight. Yeah, they. And we at least felt it right from from the oh, first 100%. from the roll up. So. So they'll play on all synthetics in the Northern Territory, Suchi. So coming back, playing on grass, give me your yeah, take I on Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realise that. I, I didn't know uh, they were all synthetic clubs. So, and yeah, obviously not playing there. I could imagine that the heat would would make them a little bit tricky to play on in, in Darwin. I'm not, I'm not too sure. So it's on the bucket list to try and get up there. But obviously, yeah, there's a big comparison, big difference between grass and synthetic. So um, yeah, obviously it's, that's going to be a bit of a tough ask for the NT boys to try and. The try master coming down here playing on such grass, good, good grass green. So, didn't quite go to plan that one as he hmm. tips it in for no. maybe second shot. Oh. What a way to go to walk down and the second hands are bowled to Yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's really to to walk back up and yeah. have a have a go. As the magpie lands and not yeah. there could be an omen. Yeah. Matthew <laughs> magpie lands in the <laughs> middle of the bowling green. Be people throwing things at that. So the end ring. Having a bit of a battle over there. Fourteen all. Oh, just five minutes to go. Betty Twist against Scott Hollingworth. So I see the Northern Territory CEO Jacko. Paul down Jackson, yeah, Paul Paul's Jackson, here. Down here, yeah. enjoying enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. So caught up with him and had a chat, so, and then... Yeah, there's plenty of the, uh, a few of the CEOs and presidents, of course, Doug, as you'd be aware of, about enjoying the Nationals. Uh, and great to hear the stories of all the great development work that they're all doing. Uh, well, I, I had the pleasure of, as you know, presidents from New South Wales and Victoria as we went for a spin yesterday back up into up to the farm uh, look, it's really good you just just talking about what they do we do how we go about things you know the money generated by pokies through to you know, here we, we only survive on hard work community buy-in um, and chook wrap 
chook raffles. And I mean, we always tell the story that we have that many chook raffles. We actually created the egg shortage <laughs> over over here, Matthew. But it's how we survive, and it yeah. gives the gives you good culture within within the club. Yeah, because you've got to have buy-in, and that's just to survive. Yeah. So as tough as it is, is, it's just what it is. And just enjoying the success together too, when you're making it all work. Those clubs yeah. that are you know built on volunteers. I think that's, I think, it's it's a lot of hard work. There's no doubt about that. But I also love seeing how much people enjoy the the, the success of that hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, yeah, leadership's important within the clubs, and, and we and we get it. They get it right. Uh, you know, we see so many, and we do as bowls WA as our board have a big focus on clubs. You know, we, we always say, and it'll be the same whether whether you're watching in the NT or any of the states. The, the, the governing body, parent body, does not sign up one member. It's all done by the clubs. So that's why we try and assist in any way we can to facilitate and help with all that but it's it, their responsibility and so but you know our success is in their hands and so we're really encouraging of them to sign up as many in the programs that you guys Bolt Australia assist in rolling out so and so I see that I see that you know as we're in the middle obviously as, as Bolt's WA and so we see how you assist us to help our clubs and it's really appreciative because you have the same focus because you know with this federated model it's really important that everyone below you if you like is really successful and that's what you're always aware of that as BA so it's, it's really uh, helpful for us to see that. Yeah I couldn't agree more Doug and as I said before you know the state success is just a, a conglomeration of all the success of all of your clubs and yeah. the same same next level up nationally so everything starts at the at the community level for for a sport like bowls and um, I think anything that we can do to help a club be as good as it can be or help a, an athlete, a player or an official go as far as they can go um, is something special. Yeah, and it's really good for me and, and for you as well I know is, is you walk in and if you, you know, know we're in the middle of doing what we're doing, if you get up and stand up and you, you look around and you see the crowd buy in, you see the colours, you feel the atmosphere, you see how well it's been done by the Sorrento Bowling Club and, and the bowling community within our state. It's really, it's just really uplifting to see that. It must be good for you, as with the position, lofty position that you hold, to see the success being spread around. Oh, without a doubt. And you just, I mean, events like this and like the World Chance and the AO, the amount of organising committee meetings that so many people attend, and then to actually see it all come to fruition. Um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of planning that goes into, oh, absolutely. into this stuff. Yeah, um, we we before we understated uh, Andrew Howie and, and his role and, and the time that goes into it. Um, it's amazing what he does is unbelievably good, isn't it? Yeah, and there's just so many stakeholders. You know, there's the, the volunteers and the clubs, the athletes, the, yeah. the partners and supporters. Um, so. You know, so many elements to it, and, and the states will do an enormous amount of work in organising the whole transport and logistics for their own teams. And um, you know, I, I think the way that everybody goes about it collaboratively, collaboratively, has been a big part of the success of a lot of these national yeah. events. So, you give us an update there, Sachi. Yeah, NC there, got the mat back. So important. End was only a single, but stops the run anyway from the New South Wales guys. It's bringing the mat right back up. Looking to put the jack on the tee. They got big hearts, haven't they? They, they, oh, just, they don't lay down. They've up. got it. They just fight, been yeah. chiselling away. No, and not. You should admire the way they go oh, about it. Oh, hundred oh, percent. They're so professional. Obviously, say so they're um, they're limited with their experience. For, you know what they get to do, but um, no, they certainly don't back down from anyone, and, and they give their best. And, and the contrast here, we've got to skip. Skips for Australia. Yeah, well, that's right. That's then, what you're up against. And then, yeah, then, and look at that. And then leading next door, we've got Benny Trainer, who just drops one a lazy eight foot away. Um, and then we'll see. Oh, well, um, crash into that. Plenty of whacking over there on the middle ring. Yeah, he's pulled, of out, pulled out the one wood there. Yeah, one he? nearly uh, took out ours, Jack. So Daniel Hill just uh, taking a step back off the mat, just getting himself ready to go again. The bowls manager at Charlestown Bowling Club in Newcastle. Oh, is that right? One of the nicest bowling clubs, uh, yep. Been to Charlestown a few, few times in my day. They've got a brand new uh, double undercover green there with one roof, so. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, very good facilities at Charlestown there in Newcastle. 
in contrast to I opened, helped open one the other day in Westonia. Yes. Six shrinker yes. with the roof. Yeah, that nice. Was, that's good. Are they getting a bit popular now? We'll see if more and more clubs are starting to do it. Uh, it's the way forward. A great shot from Ben. Trails around the corner. Must get a lot of confidence out of doing that in front of well, a crowd and, and live streaming at home. And We said that in the, this morning games when uh, South Australia played Victoria, both girls actually led really, really well, which uh, with the strong wind that we get here, uh, it's certainly not easy to do that. I'm sure brother Jason and his dad Lee and his wife Kelly were up clapping that one wherever they're watching it yes. from. I hope they are. If not, he'll be telling him to watch the replay, <laughs> go cut through all the other stuff, go straight through to to the 14, 15th end and have a look at that one. Not a bad follow-up either from Smithy. Yeah. Well, Lee's having a real good look at this, so he might, he might nearly be tempted to get... OK. So he's call is? You know, he's calling him to play about a metre, four feet through. So maybe try and change something up at the front. Or if he gets that gap, he might be able to get back to the jack. I don't think he's quite got the weight to do that. It was a draw weight, but... But second shot. Yeah, pumped up Daniels for... So he's played this fairly well. well a bit of rephrase that. He's has. played that played exceptionally played very well. Well, yeah. well we might see, I think we might see a change of weight this time. Happy with his work as he comes back and high fives some of the commentators on the way through. So it's good to see. We all enjoyed that. So confident looking at, he's looking at trying to, trying to move some of the front stuff here, Doug. Yeah, they got to bulldoze his way through and create a path for the... Healy and, and Trainer. Well, made a connection. And, and well, it makes it a lot better. Yes. Bringing Daniel's ball into the head and certainly changed things. So now they they go to one down and with yep, the one down with chances. To, yep. And punch that out. We'll see. Still a bit of traffic is a problem, isn't it? That he's got to work his way through. So Matt, how's your uh, game go? Yeah, I've only ever played social bowls. Social bowls, yeah. So okay, so I've been fascinated. So, well, where are you going to start from? Yeah, yeah, I've been fascinated just, you know, listening and learning and so much to learn around tactics. And I heard you talking with Howie before yeah. around the pace of play. I just yeah, you never I learn stop. every time. No, I you never look. stop learning. I'm, I'm 35 years in and I'm, I'm still learning every day. You must have been very young when you I started. Was nine. I, was, I was nine, nine yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit disappointed with that one. Finish the short. No, and there was a gate there yeah, for there him was. To, to arrive through. But well, the New South Wales guys aren't, aren't going to be short, so no, no. So if they're going to make sure they're reaching, the NT boys need to do the same. So Carl on the forehand got some chances here. If he can try and get a roll out of the shot bolt. Don't know if it'll quite get down. Will we stay on? Yes, he will. That might be a... So, um, and that's the difference we very, talked about. Yeah, valuable the, bowl. The, uh, the, the staying in play. Could have very easily have lost that bowl, and it's a bowl not involved. But still in the game. Yep. That's the result of the wind and a little bit yes. of fear, maybe, about what yes. could go wrong, I think. But Well, it's not hard to get caught by it. No, absolutely, it's not. Uh, Carl... Same way again. See so if we can get a couple of rolls out of the shot bowl. Well, he's looking on again. He's looking he's hard. He's closer this time. Car Healy, look at this. Look at this, if you don't mind. Thank your mother for the rabbits. And made two out of it. What a shot. Carl Healy. High fives all around. I'll tell you, win two world championships. Yeah.
They just make it look easy, don't they? Oh. The, everything, what he had to align to get that, the weight, you know, the shape he had to pick up. That win's not easy, and well, you can't back, you can't back on the miss twice, Doug. That's the no, thing, like, and, and that's the art of the game with these guys. The correction kept the, exactly the same way, made the adjustment with his line, and, and now Tristan's uh, he's going to be in quite a bit of heck here. So, Matthew, as we watch this one go down, the introduction of Puma into the. Tell you what, it was a good fair, shot. Fair, Ooh. fair shot. Um, the impact of that? Have you seen anything yet? He actually had a meeting with them this afternoon and um, just you know doing a bit of a debrief on the. It's the first time that they've provided all the apparel for the Jackaroos at the World Championships and and the, and the interest they've had from clubs around the country and they're there to do whatever clubs want to do and just uh, talk through any customised stuff. So the, the, I think that hopefully they'll be a great supporter of the sport for for many years to come and you know what a great start for the. Uh, for the relationship with the Jackaroos to be at a world champs where you know our outstanding athletes every one of them went home with a, a world champs medal around their neck and won the won the first ever uh, overall Paris trophy and also took home the overall men's trophy and uh, a great way to start the partnership. I, I had the pleasure of watching a fair bit of the Paris you know because we obviously have our WA team there uh, absolutely amazed by the standard of it you know I knew it was going to be good but it, it was next level up from you know, than, than perhaps what I expected. So and that was so good to be involved. And the work with the Warwick Bowling Club, and, you know, they had to mat people, mat each end, and uh, their buy-in and involvement and support of, of the event was great for me as, as a West Australian to see. Yeah. Uh, the the Paris at the World Champs, I mean, that finals day when Jackie and Jake won the gold and... Uh, um, also, Damien and, and Jimmy just there's a lot of talk that day about how fast the greens were at Helen's Vale, and it's all beyond me, Doug. But the yeah, way yeah. they adjusted, the, yeah, yeah. the quality of bowls was just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's all, it was awesome, awesome. Just yeah, it was amazing. Like some of those countries, I didn't even realize actually play bowls. I think Turkey was out here, and France, and Turkey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and one of them had come off in the World Champs. We only saw a little bit of it. We were over there for meetings with the rest of the states, and uh, uh, some had come off the back of Patonk yeah, into okay. the bowls. Wow, it's amazing. And I tell you, the, the French guys held their rope. I think Australia only just got over them. And the, the French nearly knocked them out of it, and obviously they went on to win the gold. But and My yeah. enduring memory I have of that was as we were walking down for one of the meetings and we are heading down to the, the bowling club, and um, uh, we had couple of guys from PNG in front of us carrying a wooden box with balls in it for the day. Papua New Guinea, yeah. Yeah, P uh, Papua New Guinea says uh, you know, Forever Young was their yeah. logo across the back of the shirt and the, the colour and the enthusiasm you could see in their faces as they're walking down for a day day of bowls. It was so good. Yeah, it just sort of encapsulated the whole spirit of it all to yeah. to see they didn't have you know, surrounded under dollar bowls bag and yeah, it, w it was great. A wooden case with a couple of bowls. Yeah. I um I actually played someone from Sweden in the uh, Australian Open a couple of years ago, and he came with his bowls in a cooler bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be a waste of a cooler bag. Yeah, a cooler country. bag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now the opening ceremony with the, all the Pacific nations and the African nations and some singing and colour it was just it was really special. And and the first the first one of that size for world bowls, so hopefully it's it's. Yeah. Uh, Sets a good standard for the future. Uh, bowls in the Olympics. I can't let you go without asking that question. Yeah, look, uh, there's a there's an Olympic advisory group coordinated by World Bowls, and and we sit on that as well. Met recently, um, doing all of the work that we need to do to understand how you can really give yourself a chance at IOC level to be recognised and can get into get into the Olympics. And certainly, with 2032 on uh, our nation's doorstep, it's got to be a target, doesn't it, Doug? Absolutely. S to have something to as to aspire to that level, you know, on the on the world stage, yeah, absolutely. And we have so much to offer as well. Yeah. And I think it's really important. Well, um, the, the Brisbane Commonwealth Games. Do, do we do, do Australia get to pick a couple of home sports? Is that how it works? I'm not sure. Yeah, I've, I've been learning a bit that myself, Lee. It's not as simple as the host body okay. just gets to pick some sports. Right, okay. It still has to go through. International Olympic Committee approval and all yeah, of those okay. things. And, um, 
see there was some interesting announcements around 2024 in LA. I think um, cricket, softball, and baseball oh, wow, are okay. back. Yeah, right. Uh, squash is in. Squash is okay. squash, like netball and us, are one of those Commonwealth Games only sports permanently. So. Um, you know, it took a bit of heart out of that. that yeah, there's uh, been some interesting sports yeah. getting in over the years. So. Yeah. There's a lot of politicking goes on behind the scene yeah. is the bigger issue yeah. from my limited understanding of it, Matthew. Yeah, we're going to need that window. But it's only down to nine years now. It, like it, it, It's a very significant process. To uh, I know when I was working in international cricket back in early 2000s, we were talking about you know 2020 in the Olympics, and now their first first go at it's going to be 2020. 2028, so I said 2024 before, 2028 in, in LA. Uh, the girls are going great guns over there. Uh, they're almost 50 shots ahead. Oh, see Daniel, making a nice correction. players are putting them down. Can you see the WA scores yeah. while you're going, yeah, Sachi? Yeah, I can. So the New South... Uh, sorry, WA men are 20... Uh, sorry, 40-24, up on 41 ends. And the girls are three behind against Tassie. About the same out of ends. Victoria and the girls look like they're 58-40 against ACT. Fortunately, all the other master boards are a bit out of sight. So, those joining us over the weekend, we have plenty of bowls coming up. Do you know the program going forward from here? Please. So yeah, we do. You do? Yeah, yeah. I know you do. So, yeah, what, so what, did you, what did you say this tomorrow morning? So, uh, we've got Queensland, uh, the Queensland men... Uh, taking on Victorian men, so we have Aaron Sheriff playing Dylan Fisher. So we get to see the great Aaron Sheriff on the live stream. Roll, roll through the rest of them, it's in interesting. And the girls, the girls in the afternoon, uh, will have ACT taking on Northern Territory, so uh, Chloe Morrison's team uh, will be taking on Alyssa Regini uh, in the afternoon. And I can, if you just bear with me, I can let you know the rest of it and the Northern Territory get another spin uh, I think I think they get one each I think I think yes. that'll be it for Northern Territory yep okay so Sunday Sunday we'll have uh, South Australia against Tasmania yep. in the uh, that'll be the men first. So I'll just try and see who that's going to be. So South Australia. That'll be Nathan Black taking on Taylor Mail. And in the afternoon, I think it might be the WA girls. I think for memory. Yep. Uh, Queensland against WA and the girls. So that will be. It'll be Lindsay Clark against Hayley Packer. So WA girls getting the game on the live stream. And then the Monday is pending on who it's between. Yes, yes, so, it's, it's as it should be. Yeah, so yeah, depending on the position. Yeah. But it's a fair spread. Everybody yeah, it's gets a fair a look spread. At it. Yeah. And, and the beauty of the live stream, as Matthew points out, is you know, obviously not everyone can be here and, and as much as there'll be a lot of people revisit and tourism will, will get a real little kick from this so uh, you know he's watching it from wherever you are in, in the world actually so yeah, it's just fantastic but I'm sure there'll be some Northern Territory people kicking back about now and getting ready to chuck some barramundi fillets well, on the barbecue well they've done very well so 
One rink's one in front of the bench whist rink, and the other one's only four behind, so they've uh, done themselves very well. And 16 behind, still plenty of ends yet. They're not gone by any means. Far from it. Although one rink's not far off. Uh, they're playing their 20th end now, the Aaron Wilson rink. They didn't muck around, did they? No, they don't muck around. They're just so, so fast, <laughs> those guys. So it's a real credible effort from the NT. You oh, 100%. Sit yeah. Sit that digests this to where, yeah. you know, the stages where they were during the during the, the bigger picture, during the whole 100%. game. You know, and Getting an insight of how their season works as well oh. and the limited opportunity because obviously the weather. And the numbers. And the numbers of Chloe only having eight clubs to pick from. Incredible. It's difficult. Absolutely. Amazing. Four shots down, two ends to go. Over there. Sit. Oh, he's got the gap. Oh, whiz. Gave himself the chance. Yeah, oh, 100%. Well, that's right. There was plenty of things to sit on. So, well, now we'll see what Schreiner and Smallcomb can do. Both have got... S well, in, both got setups they can use and get shots. Oh, sit, 100%. Sit and, sit and flop. Swooping on the backhand there. He's looking at it. And as usual, his weight has given the opportunity, but slides wide. Well, he's covered He's covered the NC bowls there, so like Carl said, he's pretty happy with that finish. Tristan coming on the opposite hand. He's going on the wider hand of the two as we come back to the club. And Wynn won't quite be his friend here, but right. there's still room for him to do it. Well, he's going he's going in the direction with the wind, so uh, he's he just no, needs to shitty oh, oh, he's, he's no. got the gap. Uh, the slide. He's not far away here. Just needs to keep on rolling. A roll oh, short? Just a couple of rolls, yeah. But just got one to play. Doesn't really need to change too much. No. Just needs to land something. An ounce of luck would, would be yeah. what he needs, isn't it? Yeah. We're going for the quick win here. They built the mat right up, so we <laughs> <laughs> might. <laughs> I don't want to call it too early, but we might go for the old swampy trick. So Tristan's watching this one. So it's still got interest. He's got a good line. He's going to get down. Oh, he's just clipping that wide bolt. A lovely wait for it. The car's going to have a look here, see how many it is. Got the measure out. Just the one. Just the one. Just the one. So that was the 16th end, so five ends to go. So, done well here, Doug. Looks like I'm going to have the last ring twice. How do you? Well, you're on an hourly rate, so you shouldn't <laughs> complain. Yeah. You're just lucky it's not a performance based <laughs> rate. <laughs> no, that would be in big trouble then. It's a bit harsh. Yeah, I know.
So interestingly enough, New South Wales are just finishing off like the unification process that uh, yes. we and WA did back in 06 yes. when we got to got it all wound up. Um, yeah, it's quite quite the process, but winding it back into the into the one entity, if you like. So challenge in itself, especially in a bigger bigger state. Like yeah, that. a lot of numbers. It's hard yeah. to get everyone exactly on that. I think were they the last state question. to do it? I think, the, I think uh, everybody else. My yeah. knowledge is yes. Matthew yeah. would know more than I. But yeah, they are, and as you say, yeah, big, the biggest biggest number of bowls clubs. Um, so uh, obviously a really important development and. Um, they get some new leadership there too. I think the the CEO of Bowls New South Wales started about the same time that I did, and I know he's really enjoying the uh, the opportunities that lay ahead for such a, a big bowl state. A background with Qantas. Yeah, yeah. So he had an involvement in um, corporate partnerships with sport. Um, yes. Also, I think he was uh, CEO of. Uh, on a, a foundation that Robert D. Costello ran for um, right, eh? for Indigenous marathons. Um, yep. Yeah, so it brings a really good uh, background and perspective to things. Yeah. It's good to have that outside vision and experience to bring bring to the sport as long as you've got within the organization you know that that knowledge of the of the sport and and its pulse and its character and and have that so that you you are turning things in the right direction but to have that clarity uh, coming in and looking at, at at a new enterprise in this case a sporting one is is uh, not an ad- it's an advantage but it's really good for the sport especially if there's been some other sporting background I know he's uh, President, I was um, touring around with yesterday. Dillis Kindley side is uh, has got a lot of confidence in in Tim. Yeah, they're doing some great stuff. They've got a big conference coming up around there for a big members conference around their AGM next month. So looking forward to that. Yeah, I think they've just finished completed their election cycle, and the they although they have so they know who the on the board, but they don't know who will hold the positions, but. You know, you would assume maybe they'll stay the same. Yeah, I think their AGM's the day after ours on the yeah, right. 9th of November. You can really hear that wind blowing now. Yeah. <laughs> It'll so be tricky for these guys. They'll be playing into the wind now, coming back this way. Yeah, so. it's, it's uphill, downhill, isn't yeah. it? That's a real cracker. Yeah, there'll be a bit of difference in pace. It's a little bit different over here this side of the green you get the full face of the wind great when they're playing over over on uh, ring six and that end you get that shed comes into play and it'll whistle around it so that'll be a trickier for them and and then also that shade that has another sort of an impact on the game as well so as it comes in and out of there so but here where we are it's no we're actually we get it well we're uh, we're actually in a pretty good spot here Doug actually we pretty well protected yep for some real home ground advantages that that knowledge of the wind where yeah it well, 100% and... I, I had a, I've had plenty of people ask me um, what the conditions are like in WA and that was the first thing I certainly said was yeah you got to take the wind factor into it yeah if depending where buildings are how they can bounce and roll and you know the wide hand can be not as wide yep. as you think yep. and, um, yeah for me who comes down from the bush to play where the sea breeze is pretty second hand by the time it reaches us I'll give you the tip um, yep. Uh, and um, stops about 100k short of where I live, but but yeah, look, it's um, and you come down and then all of a sudden you're playing and it's it's, it's great, it's great fun. It's a different different beast. Well, the girls have increased their lead. They're only just shy off the off raising the bat. 96.31. So uh, Northern Territory girls, their their win this morning's been short lived. Just about to have our first completed rink, middle rink, Aaron Wilson's game. Just about finished. Here's Daniel Baker. Yeah, 
Yep, they're all done. What's Healy done here? Oh, she's got great weight. Look at this. Snuck in for another one. Twisty uh, playing his second last end. He's just hit the front. 18 16. Sneak off to Rossmoyne after this. Dougie, you got a pennant trial tonight. Oh, yeah. So, Rossmoyne. Big Park versus yeah. Rossmoyne, eh? Yeah. They've got a pretty good raffle going, too. They're giving a trip away for. Yeah, that was, that's original, isn't it? Yeah, a trip away to the Australian Open. Great, great. Uh, yeah. Great prize. Two people, all expenses paid. So, uh, there'd be some information on their Facebook page, I'd imagine, about that, or the club club website. Anyone wishing to go into that? Yeah. I believe it's $10 a ticket, so $10 could win you a full expenses paid trip to the Gold Coast. And limited ticket numbers? Yeah, I'm, well, not, so. I'm not sure, yeah. Undercover, no doubt? Uh, we'll be playing undercover tonight, I'd say so, yes. Well, it's a nice night, so they might put us there, side. see what happens. Depends where the lights are. I yeah. mean, the lights, under, they've always got lights under that. So. Yeah. The WA girls have just got their nose back in front, 40 to 38. And Tassie guys are starting to make a little bit of a comeback, got it back to within 15 now. We've still got 20 ins to go. Which is very doable. Hmm. His last bowl, he do here. Silky smooth action does have Tristan has, doesn't he? Well, how's he looking? Tell you what, he's giving it a show. He's giving it a real good show. I think he's going to draw this just about. Oh, I think he nearly has. They're no looking. One's, no one's saying anything. To get a better angle yeah. there. Yeah, well, that's good. I was giving it the old finger measure. Yep, I think he's conceded it. Yep. And acknowledged by everyone. Both the thirds were clapping that. That was um, real good sportsmanship when you see that acknowledged oh. for a great ball. Oh, Natasha looks like she's turned this morning's score around. She's up 39-7. Yeah, she um, will be happy about that. Yeah, not too often you see Natasha on the losing side of the board too often. No, surrounded by some fair players. Yes. But she was up against a fair player and yep. a fair side. Yes, certainly was. Our own golden girl. So, Matt up. Start from Daniel. Well done, start. He's had a very good afternoon, has Daniel? Well, 
Well, we might try and get uh, an Australian coach on for a couple of ends. Yeah, the national Anyone coach. Get quickly, so Matty, yeah. well, thank you for your time. No, thank, thank you. you, thank you very much for the chance to have a chat, guys. And um, and yeah, great work that you're doing. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. So you have the pleasure. Yes. We'll wait till he takes a seat. And so you may have the pleasure. Yes, we've got the Australian coach. He's going to. Uh, Help us close this game out. Gary Willis, welcome. Hello, Suchi. How are you? Hello, Doug. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Not so too bad on a beautiful sunny day in WA. So, off from the top, you had big shoes come into the job. Big shoes to fill, and you've filled them, and they might be a bit tight. <laughs> oh, I doubt that, but, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it was a... Uh, a, a big job to fill and obviously uh, the man before me, Steve Glasson, uh, was a hard act to follow. Uh, probably had the, the luxury of working with Steve and being a mate of his for a long period of time and then working with him for, for 10 years before I sort of stepped into the job. I was very fortunate and very honoured to, to have the job. So, uh, no, it's been great. So if we just rewind before you did get the job, what was your role prior to that? So I was a national assistant coach for Steve and, and uh, also worked a fair bit with New South Wales in the pathways and um, with the New South Wales women's team and the men's team for a period sort of over six or seven years as well. So uh, probably cut my teeth in, in most areas of, of the coaching realm in representative bowls. So I had a good lead up and, and a lot of good people around me and a lot of good support. So uh, now it's been, as I said, I'm very lucky and, and just still probably... Um, overawed at the honour of being the national coach. So, like, we may know between Sachi and myself, but accomplished bowler in your own right? Yeah, Jeez. I used to play a bit. Be, I wouldn't yeah. say, yeah, yeah well, I used to play a little bit. So Park yep. up the humbleness and, yep. and, and let us know. Oh, well, I played for Australia uh, back in um, uh, the open side, back from sort of uh, late 90s to early 2000 and, and well, 2002. Uh, which included a Com Games in Manchester, so um, that was an interesting uh, time in my life and my representative career, different greens and different environment. But um, no, I, I, yeah, I was very lucky to, to represent Australia in the Open squad during that time when, you know, the players like the Rex Johnsons and Steve Glassons and Adam Jeffries and Kelvin Kirkos were all involved. And, it was uh, certainly a, a golden era, wasn't uh, it? Really, when that was, I think, really when Australian bowls really took off to that next level, didn't it? With, the, with those guys coming through the ranks, it was. Yeah, it was amazing. It's exceptional watching it back then. Yeah, it really was, and, and such a you know fantastic group of guys as well. But just the, the the level of their play back in those days, 20 years ago, was just amazing. Yeah. And um, to rub shoulders with them and and sort of get to play alongside them for the country was a was a huge buzz. I'd been in sort of development programs myself, come through the juniors, started at you know junior nationals, which we had here last week, it was fantastic. Uh, I'm very passionate about our juniors and, and the junior programs around the country uh, and then sort of transitioning through under 25 Australian teams and into the Open so I've sort of uh, I've been through it all haven't haven't done it all probably as well as I could have but they can certainly learn from my mistakes so uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I cover all angles hopefully so yeah. we we'll probably won't go down that path entirely but so tell me you come into the job so how long have you, sorry, first of all, how long have you been in the role? Uh, about three years now. So, yeah, just th through that COVID period, which was a really difficult period, yeah, you know, as far as the coaching, keeping them engaged and and um, still together and, you know, trying to motivate them through that period. And and uh, it probably gave me a bit of time during COVID to set myself up to, you know, to make sure the program was in the right place. There's a lot of different asp aspects to it with government funding and me getting my head around who was who in the zoo. So... Uh, in one respect, I was probably pretty lucky, but it was really hard for the players and a hard time to coach them. So, so success, success that you've come off the back end, we'll just wind it back to the Com Games and the World Champs, which was the bigger achievement? Oh, listen, I, you sort of pinch yourself and it's so different, you know. You, you sort of think, um, probably one of my biggest goals, Doug, was to... Um, I was disappointed with my own personal performance in the UK. I was disappointed when I played 20 years ago. I was disappointed with Australia's performance in the UK, historically in the Northern Hemisphere. We weren't that good. We hadn't succeeded where I thought we could. So it was a bit of a goal of mine. And Glass and I had often spoken about um, being successful uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. And, and to get the result that we did, oh, it was you know, it was just... Um, it was a, a big buzz for me and we finished, probably... We finished number one, didn't we? Yeah, finished yeah, we on did. the top. So yeah. it was probably, you know, a little goal of mine personally to for us to succeed over there. So that was a huge buzz. Again, Worlds, there was a lot of pressure on 
asking the players to perform well in our, you know, at home on home soil. We had a lot to defend and a lot to be proud of, and um, I was really over the moon with that result too. So, Com Games, you talked about changing the success regime that we'd had there in the Northern Hemisphere. So next thing we know, we're playing the Kiwis and Mount Tambourine. Doctored Greens, I mean in a good way, and yep. trying to replicate. Who was the brainchild behind that? Was that you? Well, we sort of we we had to come up and simulate a green. So yeah. I think the, the the probably luckiest thing was that we had we had um, a, a green keeper in Mount Tambourine, a club that was very interested in hosting us, and uh, uh, Damien Bartlett up there, the green keeper, did an amazing job as did Mount Tambourine to to fix that green for us and get us in a position where. It wasn't so much the pace that affected us anymore. We knew we could get up on any pace because that green was slow. That was probably the slowest green I've ever seen in my life. So the pace and the rhythm and the physicality of actually reaching wasn't an issue. It was more the, um, you know, the idiosyncrasies that when you play in the UK, the rinks aren't completely level um, and it changes. It varies very quickly. So it was more getting our head around that. Who made that? Who took up that pathway? Yeah, so, so oh, well, it was a group decision. Um, it, it was a group decision. We just knew we needed to identify a venue at home, and it was through the support of the CGA and AIS that we were able to do it um, and move that forward. Uh, also, you know, got to take your hats off to Bowls New Zealand. It was a benefit to them, but to do that as well and agree to that for a Trans-Tasman, I think they, they've had success in the UK too, you know, at Birmingham. So um, we could take our hats off to Mount Tambo and, and Damien and the Greens and all the staff up there for uh, that lead-in. It was brilliant preparation for us yeah yeah was it dangerous bringing New Zealand and um, maybe honing their skills I don't know making it internal yeah absolutely I mean uh, the, the mountain of uh, being successful in the northern hemisphere is just the same for New Zealand as it was for us you know so um, it, it's a bit of a southern hemisphere northern hemisphere right rival, yeah, rivalry yeah. there if you right. like so if it wasn't us we'd hoped it to be them you know yeah. so right um, but yeah no we um, we embraced it we knew it was good preparation for us and uh, it, it you know paid in spades so so you've two two massive boxes those the Australian champs are outstanding um, so what's your next one where do you land next What's, well, your, what's the next on the horizon for you? Yeah, what? I guess the, the the big thing is big thing for us now is that we've got we've got a little bit of a um, a break if you like. Well, there's no benchmark event as such in 2024. When I say that, we're still got a Trans Tasman in February, so uh, we've got to go across to New Zealand where we haven't been for a long time uh, to play in a in a Trans Tasman over there because we've played predominantly in Australia, preparing for for world champs that were, were to be hosted in Australia. So that'll be the first time we're back across there to play a Trans-Tasman. We've won uh, quite a few in a row, so we certainly don't, uh, we don't want to lose that, you know, so it's, yeah. it's always hotly contested, as is any uh, sporting contest between Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we've got AIS camps coming up where we'll pick new squads at the end of the Nationals, we'll announce them in a couple of weeks' time. Everyone will come together at the AIS. There'll be an induction process, so that includes our squads, Paras, Emerging and Open Jackaroos will all come together at the AIS. Uh, they'll put them through their paces and they, they, they put us through all sorts of development opportunities, our coaches, our players, uh, and then also go on to um, get ready for that Trans-Tasman and that selection post that AIS camp in November. So, Gary, your job as a national coach, uh, input into selection... Yeah, so I sit on part of the selection panel. So Dave Stockham um, has been there for close to 10 years from South Australia, yes. former international himself. Therese Hastings from WA, as we know as a WA Pathways coach, WA uh, uh, selector and, and WA women's coach. Um, so T's actually been there for seven or eight years now herself, I think. And, and when you think about those two, Karen Murphy's also joined as a national assistant coach on that selection panel. But you think about Therese and Stocky, um, and what they've achieved because they've been part of that success over a long period of time uh, prior, you know, w w working with Steve and myself. Um, it's been a you know, golden era for Australian bowls as far as international success is concerned in the last 12 or 13 years and um, they've been a really strong part of that. So, yeah. Right, and under your umbrella, Paris. Yeah, so we've, we're very fortunate we um, were able to employ Ellen Faulkner, MBE, from the UK, and, and she's been instrumental in, in not only, you know, the success of our paras, they just won, you know, the World Championship, the overall team, 
Um, but just everything that she's doing from the grassroots through para, through the para space is um, a, f a credit to her. She's an amazing operator and a good, you know, tremendous professional. She was a fantastic player in her own right. She's probably our equivalent in the UK to Karen Murphy is in Australia. So um, with her driving that, it's only going to get better. Yeah. So um, full on job. Is it pressure within your job, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think, you know, and I always say this to players and we talk about it a lot, we want to make the country proud. We don't get it right all the time. You know, we're only human, um, but we certainly do our best. And now I'm really mindful of that, you know, like I want to do a good job for the country and um, I want to make sure that our membership is proud of the people that we put out there and we do our best to, to make sure that happens. Right, and coming to Perth and this sea breeze, is it as windy as Exmouth? <laughs> <laughs> well, Cal Barry, I reckon. So, um, yeah, I had a, I had a great trip uh, up north with my wife. We haven't been on holidays for about seven, eight years, so we're on, we were due, and I was on notice. So we jumped in a motorhome and travelled up your beautiful coast up north, all the way to Exmouth, and uh, had a tremendous time. Highly recommend it to anyone that's out there to do that west coast. It's brilliant. So this, as you know, and that's probably a leading question from me, but this is. Um, we're the reason we're in Perth is a big part of it. City of June Life and of course Tourism WA have been generous beyond belief to, for us to be able to host it and we're forever appreciative of that and again in 26 so um, so you'll be doing the same again when you, you, you go straight back or a little bit more tourism before you go head back? Oh, absolutely and uh, I encourage everybody else who's listening to come over and watch the Nationals uh, next time it's in WA and uh, uh, we jumped in a motorhome, that's the first time we'd ever done that, and we absolutely loved it. So I think we probably do exactly the same thing, except we probably head south and have a look down through Margaret River and, and Esperance and that type, of, that type of thing. We've never been there before, but I just, I've always loved West, West Aussie. I've always loved the people, and, and uh, it's just such a beautiful city and area. So. so you just be a bit more careful as you're getting out on a windy day, hopping out of the motorhome on a windy day, Gary. Yeah, you got to watch out for those handbrakes. So I did get hitched up on a handbrake, um, which I know you're leading into, Doug, so thanks for that. Um, uh, being the short stature of a person I am, I did get hitched on the uh, handbrake and was hanging in mid-air for quite some time. That was to much delight of my wife. Yeah, yeah, she so, had tears of laughter. Uh, so, it, Kate, so I cannot believe she didn't film that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy she didn't. So we best swing back to Suchi. Give us an update on this then, mate. Uh, Carl just got very close to drawing the shot there. Um, but Gary as well, you've also played a, a heck of a lot of games for ACT uh, back in your day. Uh, a bit like Northern Territory, um, obviously it's a pretty big uh, mission uh, you know, ahead trying to take on the, the, the power states. But uh, the ACT girls done very well this morning coming up with a win against Queensland. who would be one of the favourites to win this. And, and the guys only just went down by, I think, inside 10 shots. Um, there's been some great players that have come out of the ACC, obviously, back, back in your time as well. So, But um, just... What's the format like for sort of the ACT guys? Because obviously they've only got limited uh, clubs that they can they can choose from. So yeah, obviously it's a you, you're spot on. Such a, it's it's a it's a hard you know it's a hard road uh, for the territories. But um, obviously the smaller numbers and and the opportunity is far less. But um, they still punch above their weight, you know. And and you look at that in the wins this morning by both territories. And I think ACT are over there against the, they've got the Vic men uh, under the pump over there okay. at the moment too. So um, you know, we always went in there with the mentality that, you know, we were going to give it our best and you used to fight to the death and all that sort of stuff. And I guess, you know, you look back to, I look back to those days and you think of um, the Adam Jeffries again and, and um, you know, the Ken Woodses and, and oh, Ken yeah, Williams, you know, back in those days. They've, they've all represented Australia and, and um, came out of the ACT and um, or cut their teeth in the ACT, uh, Andrew Howies and, uh, you know, those sorts of players. We had so many good players in the ACT, John Demopoulos, Johnny oh, Bezier. Johnny for sure. Johnny Bezier, who now plays for, for Canada. Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He's playing in the juniors um, a fair bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, no, we, we definitely pump, punch above our weight. And, and, I mean, you go back to the old, they used to have a Moama Fiver side uh, back in the 2000s, early 2000s, which was an extension of the Australian sides. And, and we managed to win that a couple of times against every other five aside from across the country. And that's probably what really put, um, you know, not so much Adam, but particularly myself on the map, winning yeah. those, you know, the opportunity to win national titles from a little state um, and then sort of step, get your foot in the door for the Australian stuff. Yeah. And uh, Chloe Stewart actually, fe uh, sorry, not Chloe Stewart, sorry. Uh, Chloe Morrison. Sorry, Chloe Morrison, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she actually features on our live stream ring tomorrow. Um, and yeah. I think I think she's in the Pathways uh, squad. She I is, think. yeah. She's emerging jackaroo. Um, she's playing really well. So she's won just about everything there is to win in uh, 
ACT. And yeah, she's actually she's on the board, I think, as well. I think she's yeah, she is. She sits um, on the board. Yeah, so she's uh, she's a tremendous prospect, and yeah. she's playing really well at the moment too. So, so. And yeah, no, I think she did really well. She's one of the few people that've actually beaten Kelsey Cotter at the moment in Australian indoors. <laughs> <laughs> so and I suppose you're actually after that. So there's no mean feat in in, in, so in, a, in that because yeah, not so many people have, have knocked over Kelsey in the last couple of years. It's so. title in itself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Commonwealth Games, uh, obviously Melbourne have, have pulled out. Well, is there any word on that uh, as not, to what's going to happen? Uh, not really. You know, we, we, there's there's a lot of rumours and, and scuttlebug that flies around, but um, I haven't heard anything, you know, directly from anyone as yet, so your guess is as good as mine. I know they're, they're actively, obviously, seeking um, a host and, and they're working... I know CGA's working really hard at that, so we just got to bide our time at the moment and... Um, you know, work on what we can work on, get ready for this Trans Tasman, and then we'll worry about the rest after that. Yeah. So, so here for the you know duration, um, what are you looking for? You you've, you see any talent? We don't want to know names. Yeah. But, yeah. So you've got the notebook out and absolutely, yeah. So we obviously we were here, you know, from the the under 18s, these Aussie champs and uh, Aussie champ champs, uh, and the paras. So we're looking right across every discipline and um, making sure that you know making sure that. We're not missing anybody. We're talking with the state selection committee, so we're you know in cahoots with them to make sure that we don't miss anyone that they they're suggesting, uh, and just really running our eye over. We are, you know we sort of we don't sit there making notes during games. We don't want to put any pressure on anyone, but we certainly go home and make our notes and reports and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. So you'll be here Tuesday for the triples. Be here Tuesday yeah, for the triples. Plan on winning that. So. The great man's in. Yeah, the great man's in. Well, we've we'll got be watching him. Well, we're we've got ACT. So, uh, so uh, it should section. be good to sit behind Suchi with a stat book and uh, <laughs> keep those stats, Suchi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think I should leave uh, the memories that Gaz has of me in the past. I think because if you see, sir, I remember Zone Twelve days, mate. Mate, that was great days. Touch back mate, great yeah. days. Yeah. Zone Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of battles. Uh, Mount Lewis and St John's. Yeah. Yeah. Not live streaming that, Suchi? Uh, well, I, I think we've dodged it. I think we might have got lucky, but I think if we make the final, I think that is uh, live streamed. Wow! But I think we missed the uh, we missed the section games. They'll Excellent. be queuing up to um, commentate on that one. I can uh, assure you. Well, I think I know our girls. Our girls get a game uh, during the section, but I think the men's the men's is uh, brilliant. So yeah, it'd be nice wow. if we could uh, make that one. Well, the girls are off. They're done. Very impressive win. Uh, Seventy shot win. They've got the ton. And Gary, still your, your own game, Cabra Matter still? Yeah, still yeah, play still there. Cabin yeah, 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 Paul Buggers. So I still uh, throw throw them down every now and then. Yep. So I still play pennant and um, and try and keep my hand in as much as I can. And and uh, still play. Luckily enough to play in the top grade, but probably not playing well enough to stay there. But <laughs> I'm still there at the moment, mate. Well, yeah. there's still the, the rivalry between uh, Kevin Madison and Johns Park. It'd still be pretty fierce, wouldn't it? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's tremendous. It's going awesome. forever. Yeah, it's so good. And, um, yeah, no, that, uh, to win that you know that zone title to get through to play state playoffs, yeah. you certainly know. Uh, oh, 100%. You know you're playing well if you yeah. get through there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually missed the rivalry. And, and the good thing was that it, that it, it was over once... The rivalry stopped all on the Grand Royal Mates, mates after it finished. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was yeah. exactly how the game should be. Yeah, it was yeah. terrific. And it hasn't changed. Except for Ben Twist. Yeah, Twisty. Who, yeah, who's walking past right now. <laughs> so, uh, only uh, second last end here for the guys. So, And, and Suchi, there's the setup at. Uh, I've never actually been to or had the privilege to be at Serrano before. It's brilliant, isn't it? The oh, are, to be fair, really we, we probably are a little bit limited to um, the size of clubs that can yeah. actually host something. Yeah. And, and and we have a pretty tough winter as well. So if the Greens community to get the Greens running at this pace, when uh, especially when we had Victoria here only about three weeks ago, when we had about 50, 50 mil of rain. Yeah. So um, no, no. Um, Bruce Eagles, the club president. Uh, it's a new role for him as well, and. So many volunteers that are just willing to jump in and help, yeah. and no, they've um, they've certainly done themselves proud over this last couple of weeks. No, they've done a great job. So, have you spent time in the NT, as we have them in front of us? But you, have you spent time up there? I played a couple of side series up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, stayed on. Had a 
had a, a bit of a trip down uh, down through Uluru and yeah. all that back in the day. But yeah, played a little bit of bowls up there too. So haven't been there for quite some time, but absolutely love it up there too. Yeah. Yep. They've certainly uh, done themselves proud. You know, the, the first day one anyway. So a bit of a journey to go. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Well, they had a tremendous. They had a really good series last year too. I think. Um, I, I, Missing me not to know exactly where they finished, but I know they had a few close games that could have seen them make the top four, yeah. uh, which is a pretty good, Absolutely. pretty good effort. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, well, the, SC, uh, the SCT girls will be pretty happy because they've got over. I mean, they've got two of the heavies out of the way first off, so 50 percent after day one, they'll games, be very happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be very happy with uh, yeah, playing Victorian Queensland on the first day. Smith is shaking his head fiercely as he's let this one go. It's unforgiving that breeze, you know. You, well, as we'd say here, there, there was always more chance of Harold Holt coming back than that bowl on, <laughs> with that wind coming across there. Peter Taylor, one of the quickest in the game, no mucking around. So, Gary, you see, you know, quick on the mat. So is it is it just an instinct? You know, how, why those? How can they be that quick? I mean, it's good they you can see. Look well, at and two especially balls. when you see the end result. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, is I, I think it's all part of what they've trained for. You know, yeah, it's right. all part of their process. I think some people need to think about it less than others. <laughs> um, and you know, you talk about someone like Aaron Wilson, who's I think he averages about two point three seconds or maybe less. Um, and and he's he's well and truly aware of the shot he has to play before he even gets on the mat. So he's got that all you know that visualisation's all in the in the mindset, and he's ready to go, sort of thing. You know. So, so as coach, you sort of it's more about setting programs, or do you tweak bowlers? No, it's it's probably the, I guess the higher you go in coaching and and the the calibre of the player you're working with, that sort of stuff is really well ingrained. Yeah. Um, so there might be tweaks here and there, but it's never like constantly working on it or anything like that it's it's a lot more about people management and you know making sure that teams are cohesive and, and happy and um, you know sure there'll be technical things that pop up from time to time but it's it's very few and far between yeah right on. game plan absolutely yeah we go through extensive game plans uh, before during and after pretty much every match but generally if we go into um, like a com games or a um, a world championship will have really detailed game plans uh, moving into those. Yeah. So, how much time do you spend on opposition? Yeah, a fair bit, a fair bit. So, um, it's probably getting more and more these days. You know, with data analysis and stats and all that sort of stuff. I think it's yep. becoming a pretty big part of our game. So, um, gathering that data and, and compiling the data to see what we've got on different players in different different greens and different environments is, is essential for our preparation. Yeah. Right, and we, we've seen two strategies employed on this rink with the NT boys going short as often as they, every time they get the map and New South Wales ditch to ditch. Yeah, I think, I think you'll find that you, you, you look at the um, you look at the rink and who's in it, you've got Carl Healy and, and Lee, Lee Schreiner who are, are both long end specialists, you'll find that most international level players will predominantly play long ends that's the, that's the length that everyone gets found out on the most um, it tests yeah, your delivery, exactly. it, tests your, it tests everything, you know, so that's their, usually their go-to. They will go long yeah. uh, before they go anywhere else, yeah. And hats off to Northern Territory too because they've picked up on that and tried to go short. Oh, you know, 100%. So, so yeah, yeah, just yeah, change yeah, it up, which is yeah. good, yeah. They, they seem really well prepared and organised. I mean, it's hats off to Lee Farrell as, as, as his role and, you know, some of the programs he ran them through, but... They just haven't come here to play bowls. They've come here prepared to play bowls, and that's the, that's the difference. Yeah, I think it's the same internationally, Doug. You 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 know, 20 years ago, um, uh, you, you get a lot of the countries come in, and you walk up start to to win by 30 or 40, and no disrespect intended, but they've improved out of sight, you know, these days, and um, it's through good coaching and and through that experience that they've got better and better. And, um, you know, certainly a risk for us that um, they're getting so much better so quickly um, that we've got to make sure that we keep maintaining our road and our journey uh, to peak as well. So we've got to get better at everything we do and stay ahead of the game. So, But it has changed. It's the same at state level. You know, there's a, a, lo a lot of good coaching out there. Um, there's a lot of experienced players involved and they play smarter, you know. They yeah. play a lot smarter than what we used to back in the day as little states and dropping numbers and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they're different in their preparation, you're right. You know, the culture piece and, and the whole preparation, they work really hard at it. 
It's not always perfect, but certainly better than what it used to be, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, we see them, the Tassie, this, this rink, I mean, the Territory boys stopping, trying to slow play, not let them get on a quick roll. They've, they've, they've been really good, and, and um, you know, up against some superstars, but, yeah. they've you know, they've done well for themselves. Um, the work, your workload, do you ever get a break? Because bowls just doesn't stop. Yeah, no, it's been busy. Um, I've got to admit, it's it's um, it is full on, and it's not a you know it's not a thirty eight hour week. It's always <laughs> um, you know a lot of our players work night shift to compensate for or enable them to play bowls. So when I can usually communicate with them, it's after hours. So it's it's it, it is twenty four seven, and it's weekends and all that sort of stuff. But you, when you sign up, that's what you know you're up for, and um, you can't sort of switch off because. You've got to be available as the coach. I feel you've got to be available all the time. You've got to keep that relationship. You've got to keep that connection going. Um, so you're there as much as you, you know, you, uh, as much as they need you, you're always there, you know. So. How much psych work do you do with the players or the uh, squad? Yeah, I guess, you know, we're probably lucky in Australia that we've got good funding in our HP program through the OS and CGA that we can... Um, we can contract psychs for our players um, and sports psych is a, is a, it's a huge part of our game that we haven't really worked that hard on. s and is another one. Obviously we can all get a lot fitter as bowlers um, and it's, I don't want to throw stones at glass houses because uh, I'm a bit round these days too. So uh, yeah, but no, they're two areas that we're certainly working on and, and we're lucky to be able to have the resource to pay for sports psychs. It's a huge part of our game. You know, we've, we're probably lucky again in Australia that we get exposure to a lot of events. We play a lot of bowls, so we're really good and, and upskilled in that department. It's more the psychological stuff of then going to play internationally, playing for your country, all those types of things. So my role in that, um, you know, we talk about a lot as a philosophy in the program that's person first and player second. So we work really hard on making sure that, you know, we yet my conversations are around their work, are around their... You know, what are they doing outside of bowls? When they look at their bowls calendar, when do they take a holiday? You know, those sorts of things, because it's becoming more and more, it's a, it's a huge ask on all of our players these days um, to play, you know, seven days a week. They've got, they want, you know, stakeholders, their clubs, their states, their tournaments, uh, their mates, you know, everyone wants a piece of them. So they've got to be careful in how they manage that. And I try and help with that too. Right, so we see other sports look at other sports to benefit their sport. But, so do you do that? Do you sort of go, we, you know, we mirror them in some way or we can take that out of that sport and drop it here? I mean, I've talked to golfers who talk about uh, coaching golf and process and taking that process as a golf coach into a bowls coach. So maybe not a good example, but do you, do you look at other ways that, that you study and um, take ideas from. Absolutely, yeah. We've, it's funny you say that because um, I remember actually going and, and working with a golf pro, talking through uh, the process of technique with one of his young up and comers. And um, you know, we've been to different you know national uh, institutes, so the academies and everything, state-based academies, working with other sports. And you find it, it's really interesting that you think bowls would be so different from everything else, but when you talk to other sports. Uh, they've got the same problems, they've got the same issues, whether it be athletes um, from a program perspective. It's all the same stuff, um, and it's really good to talk to them. So particularly around the, uh, the programming and, and, you know, the philosophies around strategies and all that sort of stuff is very similar. Um, and, you know, there's nothing to say that, um, and we have done this before, bowls aligning with surfing. And that may sound absolutely ridiculous, wow. but um, we have found uh, mutual ground there. Yeah, really? So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, from a strategy perspective, um, there's certainly very similar aspects. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Let me divide. Well, last end for the guys. Yeah. Uh, successful campaign for New South Wales for today. Uh, for the guys, for two wins. for this ring. Yeah. So I've been privileged to witness a pretty good game here. So just trying to piece together who we think the best players are for the NT boys. Won the highest or four the highest? Oh, yeah, right. Worst. 
So, Gary, have you had a roll on this surface? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't, Doug. No, I haven't uh, touched the bowl for quite a few months, actually. Oh, so really? It right could on. be very ugly, but um, it looks, I was just saying to Suchi before, it looks uh, beautiful. Yeah, no, Sorrento Club's been, all the clubs have been good. Yeah. But Sorrento, as we're hosting the, the side series, really have fronted up with a great surface. All credit to their green keepers. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so just finishing off here. New South Wales girl has a team talk. So this is tactical ploy of why you're on live stream is go slow. So, oh, it's got to be the rule, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> we've had the last ring here both games, so <laughs> it's as much TV exposure as yes. they can get. Oh mate. yes. And the live scene, Gary, in your time, you've seen it go from nothing to where it is now, and nothing stopping it, is there? No, oh, it's just it's fantastic for our game, isn't it? Fantastic for the sport. Oh, uh, it's elevated us, and you know, you look at the um, the viewers that jump on there these days, and and the extended network of that, it's brilliant for our game. Yeah. Anything to promote the game. And the WA guys having a bit of a battle now. We're only seven in front. The women. We're tied as well. Yeah. Was not much can't in that. Close, aggregate board was tightish. Blocking the scoreboard there, but. So, what's the forecast for tomorrow, Sachi? Warm. Another warm day. <laughs> warm and windy. Warm and windy. <laughs> All the way through. So, Gary, the selectors, perhaps your stocky chairman of selectors, Dave Stockton? No, Steve Glasson is Steve actually the chairman of selectors. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, wow. So, we, uh, yeah. just when he thought he was out, we yeah. roped him back in. And, uh, yeah, yeah no, we're, we're thrilled to have uh, Glass still part of the program and, and helping us in that capacity. Yeah. yeah. So, a bit of noise behind us with the West Australian girls on the rinks six, five and four, so must be some good shots play because um, we can hear all about it. Oh, oh he's got the wiki woo, oh. one of the jack well, there's the best wiki woo today. <laughs> yep, a wiki woo for a front toucher. That's our first one. Creative. Very creative indeed. Yep, how about that? So you, you know, do you see the votes for the NT? If you're voting for New South Wales, oh, they they've all been pretty solid. Yeah, gee, would they. Yeah, it'd be hard to split any of them up, to be yeah. honest. Uh, they've been either exceptional, just very good, or exceptional. Yeah, you wouldn't want to split them, would you? They, they've all, all been played big shots at the right times and steady. Always end up in good positions. Always stayed in the game. sense of humour these Northern Territory yeah, boys I was going to well. say uh, there's been a lot of thought into this the game's all <laughs> over but <laughs> they, they both told me they had uh, pet crocs yeah they're uh, <laughs> they mustn't be very thirsty <laughs> well, he's got one out So you'll spend a bit of time networking tonight with a few of the um, key players and personnel around the traps. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, I won't uh, crowd their space. I'll be. I'll be out of here, mate. So it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Let them do what they got to do. 
Looking over the back there, I think uh, Queensland's had a bit of a tight tussle with South Australia, but just got over the line in the men. I can't quite see the, the women's board. I think ACT is still uh, going head to head with Victorian yeah. men there at the moment. Yeah, we're just in the wrong position for the aggregate board, unfortunately. Yeah, big board, yeah. Tristan with a run to trail the jack and sit the bowl. Yeah, so we can go for a bit of glory to finish off with. Can't be far away. Ooh, Cannot be far geez, away. He's got the gap. What a wow. shot. Brilliant. Stayed for shot. So there's one shot, four inches to go in the ladies WA v Tasmania game. So at the final bolt, Tristan. Tristan back it up with a brilliant draw shot. Got the legs? I don't think so. I think the mat will be too far back for that weight. Well, the boys will be shaking hands, so that's a that's a win, a convincing win in the end for the New South Wales boys over NTV, Northern Territory there. Uh, Gaz, thank you very much for your time, mate, and, your, and all the best with uh, what's coming up in the future, mate. And Thanks for having good me, to mate. See I, you. I really appreciate it, and uh, all the best with the triples next week. I'll thank be you watching, much. mate. I'll yeah, be watching no, well, well I'm young. available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, President Doug, thank you for your time. We'll see you a bit Cheers. later on in the uh, podcast as well. And to all our viewers, we'll be back first thing tomorrow about 8.30 for Queensland versus Victoria in the men's. Until then, we'll see you all tomorrow for Buzz Australia. This is Lee Lord Such. We'll see you then.